If you want to expand and improve your business online, Exabytes can help. We're Southeast Asia's leading cloud and digital solution provider with 20 years of solid experience. Today, Exabytes powers its 140,000 worldwide customers from individuals, small and medium-sized businesses to government and public listed companies with the three most important values in mind, simplify, innovate, and grow. Using the power of technology and its all-in-one solutions, which include web design, website security, cloud backup, digital marketing, business email, and more. Exabytes can guide you along every single step from zero to success to ensure you can sit back and watch your business grow. Exabytes, grow your business online. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Malaysia Website Awards for the year 2020, proudly brought to you by Exabyte. My name is Laureen and I'm going to be your host for today. And to everyone who is currently tuning in right now to this live stream, whether it's on Facebook or Zoom, we are so elated to have you joining us here today. Now, this happens to be the sixth consecutive installment of the Malaysia Website Awards. And it's no secret that this award ceremony aims to recognize the efforts talent and performance of individual and corporate owned websites alike. This year, however, given our circumstances, we're doing things a little bit differently as you can see. In addition to our virtual award presentation, our esteemed panel of judges will also be presenting a few keynote presentations. And of course, the highlight of it all, at the end of this event, we are going to be announcing the commercial, personal and e-commerce winners for the coveted site of the year award it's going to be so exciting this is going to be a momentous occasion and of course before we begin in the event you are new to zoom and you're not too sure how things work we've got you let's take a quick look at our briefing deck right here now i'm pretty sure you would have noticed by now that uh, all attendees will be muted by default so let's just give, uh, give us a little moment here let's have our slides on screen there you go. All right, so all attendees will be muted by default. Now, don't worry. If you have any questions, you can always click on the Q&A button. It's right beneath your screen. Go ahead and click on it right now. It'll pop up. And at any point in time during our presentation, so if you have any questions for our speakers, go ahead and type in your question and your name and hit send. It's as easy as that. And of course, we'd like to take this opportunity to encourage you to ask as many questions as you like. You can make them as detailed as possible because that is essentially going to help us understand your perspective better and in turn, tailor our response accordingly. Moving forward, our second option for you to communicate amongst yourself and with us is also our chat function. Now, if you don't already have this up right now, go ahead and click on the chat function. It's right beneath your screen. Click in it, our chat box will pop up. Now, before you send any messages, make sure you have all panelists and attendees selected and that way we can see everything you have to say. So you can use this chat function to talk to one another, to network and of course for general inquiries regarding our event. Now, while I have your attention here focused on the chat box, our organizing committee is also going to be sharing uh, the live stream link to this event. So go ahead, feel free to share it with your friends, your family, basically anyone who you want to tune into this live stream right now. And of course, if you were to take any pictures, a screenshot or a photo of our event here today, go ahead and tag us on Facebook at Malaysia Website Awards with the hashtags MWA2020. Exabytes and Grow Digital. That's our Facebook page at Malaysia Website Awards with the hashtag MWA2020. Exabytes and Grow Digital. And with that, we are ready to begin. Let's get this show on the road. I'd like to welcome to the screen for his opening remark. He is the Senior Vice President of Marketing for Exabytes. Please welcome Vixen Tan. Hi, Vixen. Hello, hello. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, everyone. Hi, so how are you guys can hear me? Yeah, great. I hope right. everyone great too. We're doing good. So uh, whenever you're ready, uh, the screen is yours for your speech. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Lorraine. And uh, yep, we're really uh, happy to have this uh, ceremony awards in throughout the virtualized <clears throat> way that uh, we still can see each other. Even we are not true face to face, but we are doing the screen. So hopefully everyone already get used to it because since almost a year that we have been uh, facing with the screen after, I mean, the 18th March of the 2020 and today is a one year anniversary of the, our MCO. So yep, <clears throat> already get used to it, but um, I hope that 
I hope that everyone can face to face in, in, in one day soon. Okay. Yeah. Back to today's welcome everyone to our website awards, Malaysia website award ceremony organized by Exabytes. I'm Vixen from uh, Exabytes Senior Marketing, Senior VP of Marketing. And um, yep, um, let me just a quick go through about the uh, um, website awards. So we actually, we have not just a Malaysia website awards, we have also our Singapore and Indonesia website awards too. So basically, if you have any other websites like Build for Singapore or Indonesia, you feel free to submit also towards the XRX do SWA.SG or IWA.ID as well. So not just MWA.MI. So, yep. And very, very glad to see you all here. And also, especially our judges, our expert judges that since <clears throat> a few years back, always supporting, I mean, Malaysia Website Awards, these communities, and um, yeah, giving some kind of like advice and also guidance towards those winners and so on. So thank you, very, really appreciate having a, a round of applause, even like virtually we can like using, maybe probably raise your hand, you just click on the raise your hand sign and then just give them a round of applause on that. And um, yeah, really thank you for their time and also their efforts to put in on uh, to give in judges. I mean, yeah, clap, clap, yes, definitely like worrying what, <clears throat> what you're mentioning here. So, and we are also welcome and Eileen from Ada, okay. And also Mari, Marisa from uh, My Valley and also Salia for Momentro. Yeah, and uh, they are, <clears throat> three of them are newly joined in as uh, expert judges for our, I mean, as a judges gang. So yeah, we, we use this gang, right? Yeah, we are designers, okay? So yeah, of course, I'm, I'm web designer as well. So since, um, yeah, very, many years ago, so I, I've been studying with, uh, as a web designer as well. I, I know CSS and also HTML on that time. So my, maybe currently I'm, I'm a little bit out of date, okay? <laughs> and, also, uh, not to how to say miss out, we have to thanks to uh, Wai Kong as well and uh, Susilan and also Irene Fu and so Sam. Hi Sam, been long time didn't see and so yeah, Wai Kong, Susilan and Irene. Yeah, been long time no see and hopefully we can meet up in one day. All right. Yeah, and um, we also uh, having some community jury panel. Okay, it's not just uh, expert judges, but we have some kind of like uh, community jury panel. They they were giving their points and also votes towards uh, those nominated websites. So very, very thankful to those that were very, very giving some kind of like um, supporting and uh, having the time also to giving this kind of like um, voting set. Yeah, to, to us those submissions, okay? And we have not just stand up here and we have more than that. We have even six more, okay? From, uh, you can see from uh, Vicotech, from uh, Uliman and uh, yeah, web do and, and so on. So yeah, very, really, very really thank you. I'm, I'm here very really appreciate for your time and very uh, really thanks for your support. Okay, yep. And um, how about we, we go through the uh, little bit about the Malaysia website as well, too, as well. okay. It's kind of like um, probably uh, unique viewers and impression is okay still. Yeah, more than 100, more than 100K of the impressions on our websites. The thing, the good thing is we have a total of 584 submissions. I mean, nominated websites to, I mean, 2020, in Malaysia website about uh, 2020 submissions. And we have a total of 27 Ks of the votes and which is um, really, really amazing on that number. Okay, we hope that this will keep on going and having more and more, yeah, votes and uh, submissions as well. So hopefully you, are, you guys can definitely can share to others, share to your friends, especially those friends like building websites for people ask them to sum it up. We, we need to appreciate this kind of, I mean, websites that doing the best one and appreciate them and give them a credit towards public. Okay, yep. And yeah, how actually um, Malaysia Website Awards that you're giving a judge on that based on what kind of a criteria, okay? That is some kind of like elements to have a good websites in time. So for example, in, in in current markets, right? So I believe everyone here already know that content is a very important, one of the very important elements to building up a website. But mm, not to say that uh, I'm using the a good team, then probably I have a good design. So it quite depends on how you can make it even more creative based on your own idea. So make it like more more fancy or, or how about, the thing is, you, you need to depend on the market as well because now today, right, people are getting more lazy and lazy. They want to be more straightforward and simplified. So 
straight to the point and make it simplified and clean and clear, okay? And some of them are playing around more some kind of spaces, like a padding, more paddings, right? And feel more comfortable with your design and so on. Some of them, I, I play around with the compact, a lot of stuff, put it in, but with a good structures. They can uh, make people also reading through a very comfortable way, also can, okay? So accessibility. So it, it, it's, it's not a day some uh, accessibility is, um, how to say, since end years before, we always talk about this. Um, is your website more friendly? So always talk about our customers even, and even anyone that building website. Is your website good with mobile? So, and one more thing is very important is, is you building your website is from mobile first or from your desktop first? That is a very, very tricky question. And uh, <clears throat> most of the people here is, they start from desktop first here, right? So because our family, I mean, we, we build websites with our desktop, definitely we will use a desktop view as the first priority. But the thing is people, when viewing your websites, they might be through mobile first. So that's the accessibility. We need to ensure that <clears throat> your, your, dis I mean, your displays, your UI UX in terms of the uh, in, in the mobile or in the desktop, it will be, I mean, deliver the right message. I mean, the right CTR to uh, your users, your viewers. So that is accessibility. And also interactions, not to say that interaction is not important, but when you're building up a good content and a good design and a good websites, but the thing is, if there is no any traffic or no any users are coming in to see your websites or engage or click or comment, it's like um, you're bidding for no one. So it's, it's not the right purpose, right? So basically you, you build the right things, you build the good stuff, probably you need to have it done and having some kind of like interactions in between with your users as well, okay? And the last thing, page speed is one of the main concerns to watch all the markets that do, I mean, building up websites, especially in WordPress. So basically WordPress, I mean, not say, not, not a specific in WordPress only. Page speed is all one thing that um, Google is one of the signal. Google has more than 200 kind of signals to judge your website is good or not and rank up your website. So page speed is one of it, definitely. And you might need to like having a, a simplify on that and um, like um, optimize your images and also minify your CSS and JavaScript and so on. So that is one of the criteria that we use to judge as a good website as well. So that is, a, I mean, the fastest way to, I mean, uh, the dual, dual tool with the important elements of the good websites. So I hope everyone now is here, I mean, very, very clear on that. And uh, we based on here to judge the good websites. Yep. And yeah. That, that, that's all from my end here. And I'm uh, very, very glad uh, to guys to see you guys here, even not face-to-face. -face. And uh, congratulations towards those uh, nominated websites. And also later we will announce the winners. And yeah, we will, I mean, very, very, very glad to see you here again. Yeah. Thanks. All right, thanks, Vixen. It's always a joy to have you around. And hopefully we see you soon in person as well because it's been Thank way you. too long. All right, you have a nice <laughs> day now. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was the opening remark by our Senior Vice President of Marketing of Exabytes, Mr. Dixon Tan. And right now, we are going to dive right into it. We're going to be announcing the winners for the Site of the Month Awards for the commercial category. We're going to be announcing uh, the winners for the month of January to June. And of course, uh, all the winners here in this category are going to be taking home a prize of 1,500 ringgit worth of Exabytes credits. So let's get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of January, our winner is... MaryBrown.com by Congratulations once again. We're going to be moving forward for the month of February. Ladies and gentlemen, our winner for the month of February is SarawakTourism.com by Sarawak Tourism Board. <laughs> Job well done. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, if you'd like to say a few words, a short speech, you want it. All right, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you for the website of the month award. I am actually very honored to receive this award on behalf of Strawat Tourism Board. This is our first time receiving this award, and it is actually a very good opportunity for us uh, that we are going on the right path. Hopefully, we are able to receive uh, more awards in future. 
Thank you once again. Thank you and congratulations you. once again. Yeah, thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving forward for the month of March, our winner is whitespacemedia.io by Whitespace Media. <laughs> And there you have it. Hi, Parvin. Congratulations. Hi, thank you, Lauren. And thank you, Exabytes, for what I consider as one of the best moments of my life. To receive this award and to be here with all of you fellow web designers, I hope we can put 2020 behind us, as they say, hindsight 2020, <laughs> and take this moment to look to the future, especially the future of web design. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank God, my family, my friends, and especially my wife, who has been support super supportive and who is also my first critic whenever I design something. <laughs> and she teaches me a lot on how to take criticisms and never to take them personally. And finally, the biggest lesson that I got during the past year is never to stop learning. Like Vixen said in his opening remarks, I too am hoping that we can finally gather together and meet in person to learn from each other. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Farvin, and congratulations once again. Very, very wise words there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you inspired a lot of us to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, moving forward for the month of April, we'd like to congratulate artstudio.com.my by Joe Tan Designs. Thanks, Joe, whenever you're ready. Ah, okay. Thank you, Exabai and MWA for the recognition. I'm truly honored to receive it and also thank you to provide these chances to send my gratitude to my mentor. Special thanks to Mr. Ariel Chu who taught me design, Mr. Jerome Tan who taught me using how to use different platforms to build website, and also Mr. Dominic Tan who taught me front-end coding and also CSS. Uh, without their teaching and also sharing, I wouldn't be able to be here to join this contest. So uh, thank you for now. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Fantastic job there. And congratulations once again. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of May, we have rwmfringe.com by Karuna Sarawak. Hi, Melvin. Congratulations Hi. on your win. Hi, Laureen. Thanks. Um, yeah, thank you for the award. Uh, we really enjoyed um, working on this particular project for Sarawak. And I can see that Sarawak Tourism Board is also joining this competition this year. Yeah, so thank you everyone for the award. You're most welcome and best wishes going forward. Thanks again, Melvin. Thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving forward finally for the month of June, we have upvalue.my by Upvalue Solutions. And with that, we conclude the first part of our award presentation. A job well done to all our recipients of this award. Let's give them a virtual round of applause in the chat box right now. You can put thumbs up, you can put your hands together, you can raise your hands in Zoom or comment if you're on Facebook. And right now, we are going to be moving forward with a quick presentation by one of the most amazing people I know. Now, of course, he's a regular face here on our events here at Exabytes. Please welcome to the screen, Mr. Sam Suresh, the WordPress Community Deputy. Hi, Sam. Hey, Lauren. Hi, long time no see. How are you? <laughs> I am good. Hey, I drove up a little bit more today because it's an award ceremony. Other than that, I look, you know, borderline homeless at home because it's, you know, we're <laughs> still on the CMCO. <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right. So, Sam, you're going to be talking about building a content-rich website. Right. Okay. So, whenever you're ready, please take it away. We're excited to see what you have today. Can you see my screen, Lauren? Yes, I can. Hi everyone, uh, very good afternoon and uh, first of all, thank you for Exabytes for again um, doing a great job by uh, recognizing all the talents in Malaysia. I think we need more events like this in Malaysia. So uh, today I'm going to do a quick sharing about uh, content rich websites, how to build a content rich websites. Uh, um, I'm sure um, like uh, uh, Vixen mentioned just before we begin uh, the event that uh, content is not something new. It has been there for many decades uh, and it has been talked by so many people, right? Just before I begin, uh, 
a little bit about myself. My name is Sam Suresh. Um, I have two companies. I, I'm running a software company called Modern LMS. We do e-learning platform for public institutions, governments. And I have another academy, a training academy. It's called ME.myPLT. Besides that, I contributed to a number of open source projects. Uh, one of the projects that I'm really passionate about is WordPress. Uh, I serve as global community team uh, deputy, and um, I believe 90% of the website that I saw on uh, this award ceremony is based on WordPress. So uh, that is a WordPress project that I contribute to. Let's uh, jump in directly to the content today. Uh, why content is king? So uh, there, there are so many points why content is king. It, it makes your customers trust you. It helps. SEO, search engine optimization, you get a better indexing, you get new visitors to visit uh, your website, it supplement to inbound marketing, it can increase your market share. The more content you have, the more uh, market share that you're going to hold on that specific niche or topic. So it's not something new, I don't have to elaborate this part, why content is king, right? It, it's, it's, it's the ultimate or it's the universal rule. When it comes to web, content is king. But let's look at the perspective of a web developer or web designer or your web integrator or web administrator. Why we build websites? Guys, what, what, what do you think? Why do we build websites? Why your customers are building websites? Um, we have a chat, right? So uh, can you guys like, you know, give me some hints why you are building websites? Why your customers are asking you to build websites? So I see some answers, branding, marketing any other answer other than this sales a home for your business online presence portfolio right so uh, I, I'm glad at least you guys have some idea why we are building a website <laughs> it's not because we get a job right um, building a website uh, can, can give a lot of different meaning for different businesses uh, it's always uh, what is the objective of that particular business and why they want to build a website. So uh, let's say um, if, uh, let me get this. Building a website is kind of not really difficult. Uh, you can um, build it with a lot of content, uh, with um, a lot of slides, for example, with products. Uh, like you mentioned, it can be for branding, it can be for content, uh, it can be for conversion. So for me, uh, the most, uh, the, the highest purpose of building a website is for conversion, right? Uh, some people build it for branding or image or trust and all that. But I think the main purpose for my business, I have several websites and the ultimate goal, why I want to build a website, every section of that website is built for one goal, for one purpose, which is conversion, right? Conversion. So content actually help you to convert. So that is what exactly I'm going to talk uh, to you uh, about. Uh, first of all, uh, building content, before I proceed further, I want to emphasize that uh, building content is like really difficult task. It's a boring task. Uh, I'm sure many of you have experienced that you wrote several articles and then you stopped writing. If I check your blog, probably it's going to show like last updated 20, uh, 20 or 2019, right? Because building content is boring. Uh, it's, it needs a lot of efforts. You need to have a style. You need to tell a story in a style but no pain, no gain, right? So it, 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 it is the center of website is the content. The center of a website is the content. So you have to build a content, but as a, as a, as a web developer, how are you gonna build a content? What kind of content you need to build for your clients? What kind of uh, recommendation you can make, right? We are, as a service provider, it's not just we follow what customer ask, we recommend them what is the best practices, what might work for them, what might not work for them based on our experience looking at so many different customers in the past many years. So first of all, before we move forward, I already told you that conversion is the ultimate goal why we are making content. So why you're creating a website? Probably it's the content. It can be for branding. It can be for conversion, conversion or sales, right? But maybe majority of businesses building website for conversion or for the sales. So before you know that, before you know what kind of content you can build, you need to understand how conversion happens in a website. 
So uh, I believe there are several process happens before conversion. Your customer need to go through several things before they able to uh, buy a product or before they uh, they feel convinced to buy your product. So what are the phase or what are the what are the process your customer going through? Uh, I'm not sure if anyone of heard of this three step process. Anyone three step process that your customer go through before they convert or before they buy or before the sales happen. Conversion is not necessarily a sale. It can be a subscription to your newsletter, probably or checking availability of your product. There is a three step process happening. That is no. So first of all, your customer need to get to know you first, right? Otherwise, there's no way they can buy your product or your client's product. So to be your prospect, they get to know you first. So that's probably why you have a website, you have SEO, you have digital marketing, everything in place. So your customer get to know you. Secondly, your customer need to like you, right? It's like we are getting to know someone, right? I met a girl, for example. I need to like her. And then number three is trust. I need to trust her in order uh, for me to get married with her, right? So it's like that. So when you're building a business, a website, you have to ensure that if the website's objective, your customer objective is to make conversion, and then you have to follow these four steps. You can Google about these steps, no like trust. If you Google it, you will find a lot of information. So the first of all is get to know about a business, and then your customer need to like this business, and then they trust this business, then they will buy the product. So let's look at in depth one by one. Let's go to point number one, which is no, get to know first. Product detail and price. When you're building a website, of course, you need to have product detail and price. Uh, you have to be transparent. You can't say, okay, please uh, uh, click, uh, fill up this form for inquiry, or please PM us or DM us for uh, inquiries, right? Product detail and price should be, you can at least mention from 999, right? You do, if you don't want to mention exact price, probably you worry that there are competitions and many other factors. So first point is the product detail and price. And then you need to share story, share about your company. That is a blog section. I, I, this is like one of a must have thing in any website I build. If the customer say, um, I, they, I don't want blog, then I will probably tell them you don't need to build a website, right? It, it's not just to have a fancy welcome page and beautiful slides and no one updating that. You need to have a news website. What are the new product you're launching? What do you have achieved? You probably have a uh, received an award from Exabytes. So these are the things you need to include in order for people to get to know about you, right? When you are building a website, make sure you have products, prices, specifications. You have about your company story. Tell a story. A product with a good story, a bad product with a good story, sells better than a good product with no story. This is not new, right? You probably have heard of this. You should have an address. People need to know where exactly your company is located, whether it's in Kuala Lumpur, what is the address, what's the phone number, what's your business registration. I've seen many websites that uh, don't even have a registration um, information. So it, 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 it might create a problem for people to get to know you. I'm not talking about the Google map. Don't embed Google maps, useless. No one's gonna check a directory in your Google map, right? We use Waze or Google, Google map app itself. So no map required. Number two is like, so once people get to know you, how people can like you, how people like your customer's products if you are building a website for your customer. First, uh, the second step is, first of all, showcase a product. Don't just say, I'm selling this mineral water, but you have to showcase in a 3D probably. People can see left, right, up, down. It's like when you're looking at a product in Lazada or Shopee, right? You can see all angle of it. You, can, you tend to look at the customer reviews. You want to see a real pictures. So do that. That's what customer want in order for them to like your product or your customer's product. So you need to show that in your website. Check whether your website have a, a product showcase. Do you have video gallery? Do you have embedded YouTube, TikTok, Instagram? These are the trending uh, technologies. People tend to buy, say, now sales happen. Now marketing changed. It's not brand marketing. It's not a company-driven marketing. It is a customer-driven, consumer-driven marketing now. So you go down to the platform like TikTok, 
Instagram, and you create your presence and you integrate it with your website. So people can see or people can follow. It's not one tiny icon at the footer of your page says uh, follow us or just a small F icon, Facebook icon, which is not even clear for people to follow. You can also create uh, leverage on latest technology like creating 3D videos or a Google map that shows case your product or your company and so on. Are you guys still with me? <laughs> okay, let's check out. Yeah, great. So let's continue. Um, the third point is trust. So you already create your presence in a website by adding all the information you're being transparent about product. And then people like your product because you're showing them amazing photo, hire a photographer, professional photographer to do this. Uh, do some editing to make it look stunning, beautiful. That is the first impression, right? People need to like you. That is why when you're meeting your girlfriend, probably you do some haircuts, you do facials. It's, it's work in a way like that. And now you need to build a trust. So you're going dating now, you need to build a trust. So people coming, people visiting your websites, they are looking at all this information. How do you build a trust? By doing a, probably a knowledge sharing section, you probably can write a tutorial section in a website. If you are a web-based company, tell them how you can optimize. Things that you tell your customer, instead of telling your customer, tell in your website so everybody can see. It. That's how you build a content-rich website. You have to set up subcategories, tags, uh, tags that allow you to uh, easily navigate content, let interaction with your customers. By doing that, your customer will starting to trust you. And when they trust you, of course, sales happen or conversion happen. happen. Like I mentioned, conversion not necessarily a sale. It can be something that they sign up for a trial. So once the sales happen, it doesn't stop there, right? You want to re, uh, m do some customer retention. You want to make sure your customer repeat their sales. They, they stay, stay loyal with you. So provide some customer specific content, content that is designed especially for your customers. And then probably you have a section about uh, customer stories. You ask them, hey, do you want to share your stories uh, on a website, uh, how we did it? So these are the four steps. And these are the elements that you can use uh, when you are building a content-rich website. For me, uh, I think a, a content-rich website is something uh, that uh, we cannot uh, skip or we cannot avoid because um, during the evaluation, uh, I've seen a lot of great website. Uh, I can say that um, uh, over the time, uh, uh, I'm inside the slide now. So <laughs> over the time, uh, the number of, uh, the, the quality of website actually uh, going up and it's getting really great. So it, it is something really uh, exciting to, to see great website. But I also feel like uh, a bit upset to see website that just focusing about their corporate profile. Nobody give a damn about yourself or your corporate profile. What's your vision? What's your history? It's always what's in it for me, right? I'm going to buy your product. I want to see what's your product. How are you going to show your product? How do you position your product in a customer perspective? And then customer going to know whether can I trust this guy? Are you claiming you are Malaysian number one? What are the facts that support? Or it's just a weak claim, right? So do you got a what from exabytes? <laughs> do you have uh, something that support your facts? So you need to build a trust. And then the conversion happens. Today, I, I chose Netflix as a, as, a, as a theme of my presentation. It's because uh, just ask yourself why you are subscribing Netflix? Why you like Netflix more than Astro or satellite televisions and other television? It's a content, right? If it is not content, you're not going to pay like uh, 60 or 50 bucks a month to watch all this stuff. So it's the content. If they have mediocre content, probably you don't even want to spend that much of money every month to subscribe that. So content is at the heart of every website. So when we build a website, remember we are not building to show them about your corporate information, your vision, your history. The most important thing is what it is in it for me. I'm a visitor, I'm coming to your website to buy a product, so what I get, I want to see your product. I want to know whether I can trust you or not. I want to know how do I buy. So that is a, a small sharing that um, I, I like to bring up uh, in this presentation. Um, that 
conclude my, my uh, keynote presentation today. Uh, feel free uh, to follow me uh, on TikTok or Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. It's Sam Suresh. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I guess we have some time, right, uh, Lauren? Uh, yes, we do, but uh, we don't have any questions for now. Maybe let's give them a couple of minutes. In the meantime, let me compliment you. I love this presentation. I love the whole Netflix theme that's going on. And I didn't know that you're on TikTok. How do you find it so far on TikTok? Because it, it, it is, it is uh, uh, you know, it's a training network. Uh, and um, it's like, uh, it's a, a way we deliver the content to our clients. So, um, yeah, if, if uh, TikTok is like much more about uh, entertainment network. So people go for entertainment. So you have to be entertaining at the same time you deliver your content. So you can't be just selling or, you know, delivering your contents. So, um, yeah, feel free to follow me, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I actually don't have TikTok. I've refrained myself from getting it because I feel like I will personally spend too much time on the app, which I guess is a good and bad thing. But either way, I'm still envious of people who have TikTok and I didn't know that you were on it. So um, I might actually think about it after this. <laughs> but um, yeah, we don't have any questions for now. And I understand that you have to rush off to another event. Uh, oh, okay. So one just came in. Let's just see. Okay. So this one is from Jen Lee. Jen's question is, if my content is user-centric and does not optimize for search engine, is it good? I would say that I, your content should be user-centric. It is not optimized for search engine. So if you are building for content search engine, that's totally wrong. I, I really hate when people do content stuffing in the website just for the sake of search engine optimization. That's not how search engine works. How search engine works is that if your website is good, it attract visitor, that's how it grows your search engine ranking, right? You are building website for your people, not for the robots, not for Google, not for Yahoo or Bing, right? So uh, your website content should be always user centric. Then it naturally will attract other users to come to your website. That's how the SEO works. That's how the search engine works. So you build quality content uh, with proper words, with all the content that uh, attract users, uh, high quality content, Content should be always unique. I see a lot of people plagiarize content. Search engines are really smart. You know, people can nowadays can go to Copyscape. People can just check. So Google encourage you to have unique content, unique content, right? So this are uh, some of the core vitals um, updates are coming uh, uh, in the middle of this year, which is much more about technical about loading times and uh, structure layout and all that. Uh, so content play a key role in search engine. So I think you are right. If you are, your content is user centric, it is, is, you're doing the right thing. Don't change it. Absolutely, because I think at the end of the day, what we want as consumers is a good experience, you know, with your brand and with your website, just to sum up everything you said. Um, I think we are going to cut things a little bit short. Like I said, I mentioned earlier, you're rushing off to another event. I'd like to wish you all the best, Sam. Until I see you again, thank you so much for being here with us at the Malaysian Website Awards the year 2020. It's always a joy to see you. Thank you once again. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for having Bye. me. Always a pleasure, you guys. If you enjoyed his uh, presentation, go ahead and leave him some virtual applause. You can always say thank you in the chat box. I'm pretty sure he'll see it. Now, we're going to be moving forward with uh, the winner announcements once again for the site of the month for the commercial category. Now, this time, we're going to be announcing the winners for the months of July to December. And once again, the winners of this category group will be taking home a prize of 1,500 ringgit worth of Exabytes credits. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of of July. Our winner is lvpempire.com by Nazim Alraj bin Putin. <laughs> Congratulations, Nazim. Hello. Hi, thank you for this award. <laughs> uh, this, is what, uh, this means so much to me. Uh, thank you, Exabytes and MWA for organizing this. Yes, it's a very helpful platform, especially for amateurs like me to get notice. Uh, you know, um, this is actually my first ever web, web design award. So it feels amazing to uh, have my work validated by industry professionals. I uh, also want to take this chance to uh, congratulate all the winners today. Uh, we have a ton of talented people in this Zoom call. So your work is very inspiring and um, I have a lot to catch up for, from you guys. Nonetheless, uh, I hope 
uh, we will all have a chance to probably meet at MWA 2021. Thank you and stay safe, everyone. All right, thanks, Nazir. And of course, looking at your work right here, there's no way this is the work of an amateur, and this might be your first award, but definitely not the last, I can tell you that. Congratulations once again. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you are here tuning into this right now and you'd like to share this live stream with anybody, we're going to be pasting the event link in the chat box right now, so feel free to share this with everyone. And uh, yeah, the more the merrier. We're going to be moving on with uh, the winner for the month of August. This is the site of the month. Uh, award for the commercial category for the month of August. Please congratulate goodtreegarden.my by Magnus Digital. <laughs> Hello Reynolds, congratulations on your win. Hi, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to say thank you to Exabyte for organizing Malaysia Website Award every year for the past six years. It is nice for us to be recognized for our work and it helps improve our standards uh, in this industry. I would like to say thank you to my team at Magnus Digital for giving their best to create a winning website. Uh, their attention to detail and dedication has been rewarded today with this award. Thank you to my client, GTG Agro, for trusting us to build their website. Good Tree Garden don't mind. We enjoyed so much in building it and we are really glad that you love it. I would also like to thank my wife and my family for their support. Thank you for the work. And you're most welcome. Thanks again for joining us here, Reynolds. My pleasure. All right, absolutely. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, our winner for the month of September. Please congratulate and put your virtual hands together for sod.com.my by Kurt and the <laughs> Hello, congratulations, fantastic job on your win. Hi, thank you, Lauren. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Kuen from Mitchell Studio. This is my first ever online award speech. Thank you to MWA and Isabite for this award and this occasion happened on today. 18th of March, which is my mom and wife's birthday as well. This is a memorable and remarkable day in my life. At last, I would like to thank to my client SOD for the trust. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thanks, Kurt. We'll see you soon and enjoy the rest of the day and yeah. the celebrations that are going to follow today. Congratulations once again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on for the month of October. Our winner is nextcarrental.com by Next Car Rental. <laughs> Congratulations to Next Car Rental on their win. For the month of November, we'd like to congratulate activebdcp.com.my by Good job there, guys. And finally, for the month of December, we'd like to congratulate webninja.com.my by Web Ninja Studio. <laughs> And with that, we wrap up the site of the month award for the commercial category. We're going to take a quick breather here. We're going to have another keynote presentation, this time by uh, Cecilia Kesavan, the consultant from MJ. And he's going to be talking about websites, designing websites that convert. Let's welcome him on screen right now. Hi, Cecilia. Hi, hi, Lauren. How are you? I'm and, doing good. How yes, are you? Finally. I'm okay. Things are things are slow. Things are fast, and we just need to keep up the pace for it. I know times are changing, and they're changing rapidly, but at a very slow pace. It's very difficult to to actually uh, describe it because like one moment we're here, one moment we're there. So yes, go say. <laughs> so uh, whenever you're ready, if you'd like to share your screen right now for your presentation, just give me a second. Let me share you my screen and. So just a, just, a, just a quick one. Uh, thank you for inviting me for as an expert judge for the MWA 2020 uh, for this session as well. And also uh, kudos to all the winners. Uh, we have uh, we have really, really have uh, uh, exponentially growth uh, of uh, this event as well. And uh, hopefully next year we see a bit more high level of things which is happening soon as well. Okay, let me jump straight to my uh, presentation. Uh, hopefully you guys can see the slide. We're still 
And that's once again, uh, for those of you who are tuning in right now, uh, if you happen to take any screenshots or pictures regarding our event, don't forget to tag us on Facebook, that's at Malaysia Website Awards with the hashtag NWA2020, hashtag Exabytes and hashtag Grow Digital. We love to see your photos, so take screenshots, you know, or even like pose for you while we're waiting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so Sina, everything going well on your end? We can't uh, seem to see your screen yet. That's funny. Just give me a second. Sure, absolutely. No problem at all. And of course, a quick reminder to our attendees here, if you have any questions for him at any point in time, just hit the Q&A button. It's right beneath your screen, type in your question. And like I mentioned earlier, make that as detailed as you like, because that helps us understand what you're trying to ask us. And that makes it easier for us to answer your question uh, in the long run. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Okay, all good. So whenever right, you're ready, cool. take it away. Right. So, uh, so, so the topic I'm going to speak about today is designing websites that convert. Uh, as you can see, the visual itself, uh, it gives you a plethora of things we are doing in businesses and also in the website uh, environment or uh, for the specific businesses. And you know, everybody is on sitting on cloud and moving on cloud uh, as we speak on daily basis, right? And how do you want to reach our stuff or, or product to, to the entire world now? By just sitting in front of the, a laptop or with a specific team, and we send out all this information out by a click, by a, a, uh, a specific time. So what I'm like to share here is basically there's uh, three things we need to look into uh, when developing website for conversion basis, right? So, so the first thing is basically simplicity. So simplicity on a website is very, very important because at this day and age, the information overflow is just bombarding people with so many different uh, things, products, and information. It just keep on flowing because everybody is on mobile first at this point of time. And uh, when they have time, then only they move on into the laptops or a bigger screen at this, uh, at this juncture. So believe it or not, even a simple change that can impact conversion would be like simple an example as your title, your catchy in phrases in your product, or a catchy uh, eye visually, uh, how can you do that trick? So very, very important that once we put up a product or a content or a specific write-up on the site, it doesn't mean that it could work at one time, but definitely it has to be tested whether they see whether there's any growth in that part of it and then they move on to the next one. Speed. Speed is very, very important these days. The moment a, uh, the amount of time of a person's, uh, person's uh, what do you call that, uh, time span, they spend is basically zero to eight seconds to make a compiling headline that captures their eyes and I want to make them stay on a website. It is very, very, very important. So hence the reason that, you know, every single thing you content, you guys are going to put up on the website, it is definitely you guys need to tweak and turn and twist every single time if the content is not working properly. After the eight second, the majority of visitors, what they do, if they don't like the thing, they don't like the title, they leave. So for example, you put up a, a content on a Facebook or whatever so on, and then what happens is at the eight second juncture or the in between the zero to eight second juncture if it's not compelling to me or is not related to me i will jump off or i'm not going to even click the cta on your post so that's how it happens on it within three seconds a website needs to tell a visitor that the business what has to offer so definitely when you when you're putting up a product page or a product uh, definition or content it has to click and make sure that it works in three seconds and people would like to click that and, and go on with it. Approximately 96% uh, of visitors that come to your websites are not ready to buy yet. Like Sam, Sam was mentioning this now, it is the exact same, same thing I'm going to tell. They are not going to buy. They come in first time to see whether that is something which is catching me visually or not or compelling me with the title or not then they will start leaving from that. Thing. The third point, spontaneous. If take every spontaneous trends which comes on social media or a website, it is definitely something to be followed. 
if it's not, the trend moves on, people move on, and then you lose the, the trend or the wave basically to sell your product at that juncture. It is very, very crucial at this day and age. Moving on. The importance of uh, designing elements on a website conversion is to ensure that, you know, consistent branding throughout the website. So why, for example, where if you go to an AirAsia website, right? So their branding is very, very consistent, very, very strong. Apple, if you go to the website, the product is strong, the branding is strong. So to ensure that your branding is strong, you must make sure in every single page in the website, that branding element or some sort of a branding motif has to be there and spoken in that content also. Hence the reason that people would know and understand that, you know, the content is very, very, uh, and it creates a brand trust as well, in a way that, you know, twin, there is a science behind it. If somebody sees a brand or a specific visual for 21 times, it registers in their mind. Without them, it's kind of a hypnosis kind of thing. People would start speaking about it, sharing about it without them knowing it. So you guys may want to do a bit more uh, research on that part of it because marketing, branding, we always work on that kind of uh, hypothesis, uh, um, psychological ways, right? It is very, very important. Every page load speed counts. If a single page is not loading well on the site, that means that people would just lose interest and just move on from the site or from your product site. Then what happens is the conversion to the, con the, the lead to the conversion just drops down there, right? So all there will be no talks of what your product is selling. It's very, very important to make sure that, you know, every page load is very, very uh, it's very, very crucial. It, it loads at a very crucial time. Usage of colors and contrast is very important because human's mind, it is very important. And the moment our eyes see or captures certain words, certain highlights, certain color, what happens is they would like to see uh, the, the product in much more detail. It is very, very important, right? Useful of colors and uh has to be very, very played well and not too overpowering of what you guys want to tell about your product. Strategically putting up a CTA placement for conversion, it is very important for the website. The reasoning why is that is your key to conversion to your product or sales or some sort of a lead. It is very, very crucial and important, right? The fourth, the fifth point, social proof. Social proof is basically what people are talking about your product, what people are reviewing about the product. These are the contents you guys need. It's actually a content for your consumption, for your product. It is very crucial that you guys need to portray this into the site, definitely, because it, it is a nature of people. When pe my friend puts up a review of a product, I want to go into the product and I'm also willing to buy the product not now maybe down the road the conversion may take time but if the product from the review is good people will buy moving on so, so some of the tips i'm trying to share here is also that you know um, designing for website for higher conversion is actually is quite simple but it has to be unique definitely the ux ui the user interface the user experience elements has to work very very well uh, cohesively, but as you guys can go and research as well, there's a Higgs law states, you know, more choices people have, the longer they'll take take to come to the, a decision. Hence the reason that, you know, you guys have a hundred product, for example, Lazada have a hundred old product there, but you want to find like the specific product you want to find, right? And to find that specific product, it will take a long time for you to find and find and find until you reach to a conclusion saying that, okay, I'm going to get this. So the time span you're going to do that is that it is very, very long. And, and what happens is the, the, the decision time, is it takes a very, very long time for them to decide. So if you stringent and put the product or personify the product's pages, what happens is immediately they know what they want to buy and uh, the critical thinking of buying that increasing the decision time can be reduced. And what happens is the conversion happens for that specific product, very, very important, right? Second, real-time customer support. 
it is very, very crucial. I've uh, emphasized this in my previous uh, talks with the uh, MWA. It is the same thing I'm just going to talk because at this juncture, everybody is at home. Customer support, it is number one priority. If a person wants to buy a product or bought a product and they are not satisfied with what product, how can they build that trust towards your brand? It's very, very important. Somebody must uh, reply certain questions from the customers very, very importantly at, at a very crucial time in a speed, right? That is very, very important. Focusing on landing pages, right, is very, very crucial as well. Images are beautiful, but if it's the images are too large to load at that landing page, what happens is people lose interest, they will jump out, right? So optimization for beautiful pictures, it is very, very important. If not, means you lose your conversion down the road here or the critical time of that person want to make a decision to buy the product, they will just lose it, right? Typography is very important. Readability on a mobile and a desktop, it differs in so many different ways, right? Typography or the specific font you guys are using must be ensured that, you know, it is fixed. Uh, it is suitable for mobile mobility reading and also it's a, it's a larger uh, screen reading as well. It is very important. White spaces, very, very important point on a building out a website for conversion, right? If you have too many white, yes, definitely looks like a hospitality kind of a website. Yes, some uh, audience may like it, but most of the thing that you guys want to put in there must take into space. Even though the whole website is fully colored, but there must be some sort of a place where there's some white spaces so that it soothes the eyes and to ensure that that's where you guys want to put in your CTA because it's bright, it is there and people will click it and then they will just move into the conversion or specific leads at the, the website. The fourth point, SEO elements for organic ranking. So SEO will take a long time to kick in, but how can we do that quickly? As in organic ranking, it's very, very important. Using ideal keywords, which related to your product, to related to your content, related to your topic, it is very, very important. And it's placed appropriately in specific places in the website is very, very important. And also to make sure that ensuring the page load, like I said, there's now the shortest time possible is very crucial because it will, it will take its own pathway to move the people who are going to convert themselves into the conversion or buying a specific product. Do make sure that, you know, uh, the website is also very responsive uh, in a way for devices, like I mentioned, uh, at this day and age, mobile first, the laptop or the larger screen secondary. Um, on page, off page uh, uh, optimization, how you guys can do is that using keyword uh, rich anchor text, you know, where when, when you guys want to highlight a specific product for your for your topic, then you just link it back to the product and how you, how quickly you can link it back to the product is very, very important. Not a, an A4 page paper or content, it is, it is just, a, just a waste of time for people for, read, for reading it. But how can they jump quickly to purchase a product? It is very, very important. Earning back uh, backlinks, like uh, Sam was mentioning, similar to, the, to me. Uh, saying that organically it is an authoritative websites are very, very important and it has to be uh, built. And do competitive analysis quite often to make sure that you know where you guys are standing and how you guys can improve uh, into the websites. It's very, very important. So that should be a strategy behind it and, uh, and it's crucial for building a conversion website. Okay, summary of all this. So where do we conclude? Test every element on your website to understand what works specifically for specific audience. Use, use cases are very, very important, right? This is constant. It is not a one day test, two day test. It is a constant test to make sure that, you know, how, how is my per, uh, product page or how is my website is doing well amongst the others? What is my specifically, uh, my audience are looking for in my page? It is very, very crucial. And then build content towards it and push that kind of content where the people would like to, to engage with. Very, very important. Use actual data from uh, the user. See your user feedbacks, whether it's social media uh, content or from your website itself, what people are talking about it. 
using your own gut feeling for the for the content it is it is sometimes it fails because when you think from inside out people from outside in they think differently right so very very important and hypothetically improving your website is very very crucial you must make sure that you know constantly check and balance how you guys uh, are using or developing the website is very very crucial simplify 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 and make sure that you know speed is the important part customer service is very very crucial at this point of time that's all i have for my sharing for today i am here again for you guys for any help whatever i'm contactable on linkedin facebook twitter uh, also tiktok as well but uh, yes so i'm contactable if you guys have any help questions uh, please shoot Absolutely fantastic. Thank you once again, Cecilia. Uh, let's give him a virtual round of applause. Thank you for that presentation. I think that you highlighted a lot of things, which, like I mentioned, you know, it tends to slip under our noses sometimes, especially being patient about collecting the data and then analyzing it. It's something which a lot of us are not uh, very comfortable doing because we're, we're so used to having instant results and instant gratification. So thank you for highlighting that. Uh, in the meantime, we don't really have uh, any questions yet, so we can have a little bit of a check for maybe a one, two minutes to give them some time if they do have any questions. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Susan, tell us about like this year's uh, entries. What do you think of the standard? Okay, so so usually what I what I do is that I just uh, do a very landscape uh, review of uh, how was it from from the past year to this year, right? Yes. So it's quite it's it's built a bit more better from last year, I would say, and uh, the previous years, uh, and I've uh, shared this with the the previous years uh, participant as well. It it is growth, you know, right? It's an evolution of uh, of growth. Uh, websites changes, uh, technology changes, people's mindset changes, creativity changes. So all these need to be taken into consideration when we do uh, judging for specific websites uh, or for MW specifically, right? Um, definitely, definitely, definitely. It has uh, improved uh, from where we started and where it is now. And uh, hopefully for the upcoming years, uh, it will be much more improved uh, with newer technologies and, and hopefully to see a lot more uh, AR and VR stuff uh, on a website as well. You know, new technologies to be used, right? And or, or how an, a, a bot is going to talk to us on, 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 on MWA, right? So these are the new technologies we need to improve and, and uh, put our steps up uh, ahead. Absolutely, I think it's a, a good challenge for our attendees to rise to. And of course, like you've been a judge of this for quite some time already. And have you noticed any trends in terms of website design? Uh, I'm pretty sure things are a lot more minimalistic now than they used to be, right? Yes, definitely. Uh, so comparing from last year to this year, the minimalist, uh, they have hurt us, right? So they have hurt us from the previous uh, year and uh, they are implementing uh, simplicity uh, in that uh I'm not promoting simplicity here, but uh, uh, just simplified uh, websites, very, very important. And uh, design-wise, uh, also have improved a lot. Uh, like to see a bit more, much more nicer, much more uh, better user experiences uh, moving forward. Hey guys, you heard it here first. You know what to do for next year. And uh, it seems that we don't have any questions, so we can let you go now. But as I awesome. said, if you'd like to stay on with us for the rest of the ceremony, please do. You know, we always like sure, having we'll you around. And thank, uh, you. thank you so much for being a part of the Malaysia website Watch 2020. Thank you once again. Thank I'll you, see you. Could have all the winners again. Good job, you guys. Congratulations once again. And with that, we are going to be announcing the winners for the site of the month for the personal category. Now, this time it's the month of January to June. And once again, all the winners of this category will be taking home a prize of 1,500 yen worth of Exabytes credits. Now, our team will get in touch with you, so no worries at all. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of January, our winner is shalinechia.com by Bitebear. Congratulations. Uh, everyone would like to join me on screen right now? Hi. Oh. Yeah, with your video. There you go. Hi. Hi, guys. Uh. <laughs> All right. I'm not Iru here. I'm Jason here. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Exabyte, for organizing this event year after year. All right. Uh, secondly, I would like to thank our client colony for putting their faith in our designs. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Shalin, Shalin, Shalin Chia. Sorry. 
Uh, thirdly, basically, I want to thank our competitors for giving us a run for our money. I guess without them competing against each other, our industry won't uh, basically maju. Lah. So I'd like to thank all of them uh, together. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank uh, my whole team from management to our even my baby bears uh, for pushing each other to be the best. All right, thank you. Thanks, Jason. And congratulations once again. All right, moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, our winner for the month of February. We'd like to give a virtual round of applause to mysarahcity.com by mysarahbtcity. Congratulations. <laughs> absolutely well deserved congratulations once again and for the month of march we have kakijans.com by cairo iswan and amira sayati Hi, Lorin. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lorin. Oh. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so, uh, Amira couldn't make it today, but uh, we, will, uh, we would like to thank everyone and also uh, Isabite for the opportunity and also for the recognition and hope to see you again uh, next year and the following years. <laughs> okay, that's all. Really? Thank I'm you. I'm going to hold you to that, so <laughs> we'll see you next year, hopefully. Okay, Thanks sure. Again, Carol. All right. All right. Good work, you guys. Now, for the month of April, we have geotay.studio by Imagined Information Technology. Hello. Hi. Not well done. Just I'm... say a few words on your win. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you, MWA and Exabyte. Uh, this is our first time participating in this event and it is our honor being selected as Cyber the Month. We are so happy to have our work recognized by MWA and thank you Exabyte again. And it really means so much to us. We will continue our effort uh, to create more nice work. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thank and you. we hope to see you soon. Best wishes moving forward. Congratulations okay. once again. Okay. Now, for the month of May, ladies and gentlemen, our winner is... Dipaligupta.net by Jotan Designs. Hey Jo. Hello. Thank you, Laura. Congratulations once again. And once again, thank you Exabyte and MWA for the awards. Now I would like to share a little bit about the journey of Jo Design. I have started this business in 2018, started with one person, and until today, I've expanded my business with a group of talented people. Together, we do offer various services that include website design, then development, application design and development, calendar booking system, stock tech system, customized software, and also source for program, social media management, photography and video editing, and many more. If you are interested to work with us, please do not hesitate to send in an inquiry. Please send your email to hello at joedesign.com.my. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Joe. Congratulations once again. Good going. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, finally, for the month of June, for the personal category for the site of the month, please congratulate nazim.com by Nazim Alrash bin Pundit. Winning two Sarpaman Award in my, I would say, first serious year of being a, uh, web design is very interesting. Um, this is a bit about this website. Uh, I mostly use WordPress, but this website uh, is actually my first attempt in using uh, Jamstack. This one is built in KFBJS. I didn't even know React when I started this project, so the learning curve was very deep for me, but the, at least the, in the end, the performance benefit at the end was really worth it. So I would encourage uh, every developer here to give Jamstack a try if you haven't already. Anyway, um, thank you again, uh, Exabytes and MWA for this award. Uh, I also have a presentation from Sam and Susan. And have an awesome day, everyone. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Nazim. Congratulations once again. Good job there.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, with that we wrap up the first half of the award presentation for the site of the month for the personal category. We're going to have a quick intermission right here, like I mentioned previously. This is our keynote presentation. And if you have any questions, once again, leave them in the Q&A box and we'll get right back to you. Um, next, we're going to be talking about designing the perfect navigation. And to speak more on that, we have the head of multimedia design department at the One Academy Penang. Please welcome Leong Wai Hong. Hello. Hi, can you see me? I can't see you yet. I can hear you though, so that's good. Okay, there we go. Hello. All right. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing today? Good. A bit busy. I have another just now, so yeah. Either way, we are so happy. Even though you're busy, you're still joining us here today. At the of course, of course. No worries, Thank no worries. You. Thank you for making this event even more special than it already is. Um, would you like to go ahead and set up your screen? Okay. Can you see my screen now? Mm, not yet. Still waiting. Okay, there we go. It's loading. Okay, so once you go into full screen, there you go. All right, so Waikong, whenever you're ready, take it away. The screen is yours. Okay, let me introduce myself, Waikong. Um, I'm actually the head of digital media design. In the One Academy Penang, we used to call ourselves uh, multimedia design, but because technology have changed and our courses have changed, we actually have to follow the trend and also the evolutions of digital media. And of course, web is still one of our um, one of our courses. It has to be really, really part of it. So I'm going to share about a little topic called designing the perfect navigations. But actually, there's there's nothing about perfect. Uh, to be navi the navigations cannot be perfect, but it has to make sense to the website that you are creating or you are designing. So a little sharing here. I heard about this new term called neomorphism, which is actually uh, a new uh, term that derived from the flat design that we used to be we used to create a lot of um, flat flat design in web. Um, I particularly in last year and last two years, you see a lot of websites become minimalist using a lot of white colors and so on. But actually they have derived there to, be, to have a new term, which is a little bit shadowy and a little bit of um, embed uh, versions of the navigations and so on. They call it as neomorphism. Okay. So from flat to not organic. Organic is last year's to be a very uh, strong kind of uh, trend with the illustration and and so now is actually neomorphism is going to be the next trend how about this thing i think a lot of you as designers out there and in the industry have actually seen like in the social media uh, platform they have come into the conclusions of making a light mode and also a dark mode even for your mobile so are you missing out are you going to create design that is also with the dark mode and it's, it's actually the trend that you cannot miss out. Um, of course, when we talk about responsiveness, now we are, nowadays that we actually teach, train and teach our students from the digital media design that they have to design based on mobile first. We cannot like design based on laptop first because the generations now, they're using more of the mobile than the laptop, of course, for assignments and works, right? But of course, mobile first, and we, we cannot get rid of the hamburger, hamburger navigations that is um, shrink in and coming out with the navigations that you need to drop down. And too many drop downs is also no good for, for, for great navigations. And then responsiveness as well, because responsive means that your laptop is, uh, your design, your web design is able for you to, to cater for a laptop and the tablet, of course, to the mobile. And as I say, the mobile first is a very, very important element and essences for our design now. Of course, uh, when we browse through, there's a lot of web that's still using this parallax effects, which is they have they are they they are historical a little. They are like trend, like a few years ago have been very, very trendy. A lot of effects when you scroll over, roll over, scrolling down the web page and you see all these effects. But the thing is, is like, is it going away or is it still there? But I, I just think that because minimalist still need 
a lot of works to be done in the interactive side to make the website to look real good when the user have the experience. So Paradox is still there. Of course, um, there are things I talked about. When you want to make your you know, navigation to be like damn perfect, it has to be simple, clear, and it, it has to be very focused and organized. And of course, I think there are uh, designers out there, they, you have to actually study the flow of the design, which is drop down the flows of the hierarchy of your web. And complicated, the complications of design is not going to do justice to the design. And uh, the simpler the website um, being focused in the navigation is better and it's clear words, like maybe one or two words is that it's making sense. Uh, and for a lot of you out there trained in interactive design, graphic design, or multimedia design, or interactive design, you are, you are, you belongs to, you actually learn through this, uh, this rules that is called UI, UX, and we never get out of that. And it's still the king of, of all the rules, all the rules, king of all the rules for creating navigations because user friendliness is one of the top thing that we cannot get rid of. And also making sure that it's applicable to your website. How does the website looks like? What is the objectives of creating such a navigation? Is it easy for people to go and navigate to different pages? That's crucial. Okay, there are trends that will never go away and still there and still there if, even if you have your mobile first and so on, the navigation top on top of the website is still there. We don't see the navigation below. It's a trend like there are like designers who actually break the rules and do things, but we still see that the trend navigation top is still very applicable and the vertical bar on the right side, uh, left side, sorry, on the left side is still quite applicable. Sticky top is still quite prominent, but um, it depends on the designer's like preference. And if let's say you don't want the sticky top navigations on top to be there, it's okay. It's just top navigations. And seldom there will be like sticky bottom navigations. They are like designers who break through, like I said, they do that, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be uh, a great choice of navigation. Okay, this is... Crucial. I think I have seen a lot of websites when we do the judging through and looking through all the Malaysia's web, what's websites and see that, uh, the important things is everybody has these social icons. So my advice is like, my, my humble, humble advice is that you never like, um, redesign the icons, but you just style it to, to the aesthetic that you have now for your website. Okay, and uh, another sharing, the last probably will be my last because of my sharing is going to be like quite short. Um, color schemes, you, uh, there are trends that I talk about. They are pastel colors. They are like strong colors. They are like different, different color sets that you can follow for website and style. But you, I cannot say that because that's the genre of your website because it depends on the websites that you're designing. For example, you're designing post Malaysia, Malaysia website. You cannot say that you're going like all out for pastel colors because it's not going to work. Just stick to the design guts that you have that makes the, makes the whole website looks great. And the navigation will follow probably will be that. And yeah, here will be the, uh, the tips that I hope I have for designing the perfect navigation. That's all from me. So that's my, contact information if you want to contact me for any further information that's all thank you all right super cool very short and concise thank you for that uh to everyone who's tuning in right now let's give them a virtual round of applause thank you Wai Hong. so thank you uh we're gonna wait for a couple of minutes to see if anybody has any questions to ask you in the q a right now we don't have any questions yet so we can chat in the meantime so tell me how has a cmco been for you so far Oh, uh, it changes the ways that we have, uh, we conducted our class because you, you, are, you, are not, you know that I'm from the academic side. Uh, so our class is being, uh, remote and online. So definitely everything is online. But one thing that I want to talk about is that because I also teach, uh, web design and technically teaching as well. So that part is definitely no problem. So all of you there is making, <laughs> is making sense in this industry. Yes. Yeah. So when you say web design, do you actually do the coding parts or are you towards more the aesthetics of it? 
Uh, both sides I actually look into the aesthetics part and also the technical part. When I, when I talk about, I also cover the technical part, which, which is the teaching that I do. It's also no, not a problem, not a big problem because it's just being remote. Yes. Is it really not that much of a problem? Because, you know, coding can be quite challenging, especially for beginners, because I've done it myself, right? And I, I had the toughest time when it came to coding. So, like, um, for example, if you were to tell me that I have to do it remotely with my teacher, I think I would probably, you know, curl up at a ball and start crying, you know, <laughs> because it's so difficult, especially when it comes to uh, the opening and closing of tags and all that. And these little things, you know, sometimes uh, it's difficult to, to uh, kind of teach us through a remote uh, screen. So do you face any of those challenges or has it been smooth sailing? The challenges that I face with the students is that I have to look at, like, diagnose the problem, look at, look into the coding problems uh, first and see and tell, ask the students, like, which is the areas of the problem that you face and so on. Then we tackle that part. Usually, we'll give them the keywords and so on and fix that and you fix. So, it's okay. Like, it's not, <laughs> if you compare, with, like, you know, maybe, like, creating immersive or maybe 3D, that would be more difficult. Mm, okay, I see. Do you do those those 3D things as well? Or is it just, you know, something you dabble in from time to time? It's it's inside it's part of the course, but it's not it's not part of my genre. It's not that. I see. <laughs> cool, cool, very cool. So we finished a little bit early and let's give them a couple more minutes uh, to ask any questions. So once again, for those of you who are tuning in right now, um, especially if you're on Zoom, just click on that Q&A button. It's right beneath the screen. Type in your question, especially if you have anything to do with aesthetics and design and color. You know, we're talking so much about website functionality and user experience here today. And if you want first-hand information, this is where you're going to get it because our speakers here are amazing and they have a lot of experience and they're ready to help you. So yeah, click on the Q&A button, ask us a question, and we'll get right to it. So in the meantime, we can still uh, talk, you know, for a little while. <laughs> so, uh, Wai Feng, tell me, what is the most challenging part about designing a website? In your personal opinion, because I know there are many aspects to it, but the most challenging thing? Knowing the objectives of the website first, the objectives of creating the website, and also knowing what um, what's the client one wanted? The client wanted, and also you have to also study the the background of the company. For example, the the background color or the logo is always using is this set of colors, and you cannot get rid of it. So why do they? Why don't they want to get rid of it? Or maybe how do you have a new proposal to that? So students are always being questions on on this critical side of the thinking before like moving to the designing. And setting, setting the mood board and setting the colors and the style, the style navigations, the consistency of the information and so on. So those are those coming next. But the most important is those things that I mentioned just now. Okay. So like, for instance, for example, like you mentioned about Post Malaysia earlier, you know, they have had the same colors for um, team years today at this point. What if they were to rebrand? Do you think they would still, uh, would it be difficult for them to transition to say if they wanted a different color? Do you think that would affect their business as a whole in terms of, you know, color changes? Because essentially what they're doing is changing uh, their, their identity here. What do you think? Uh, we, we actually throw these questions to some students and they made it work. And it's really nice when they actually change them, some of the typography and the supplements um, and to make the website uh, into a more contemporary look and more modern look and more to, to reach the younger audience. So those are the objectives they set. And we always see that design is being done in such a way. They still use the primary colors. They actually enhance that by using other colors inside. And it works in it works well, and we have seen very good works from from the students in this area. All right, fantastic. Um, I think we can wrap things up right now because we don't have any questions coming in. Uh, Waikong, thank you so much for being here with us, taking time. Out thank you very schedule. much. It has been fun talking to you and getting to know you a little bit better. And to everyone else, if you'd like to send uh, send him over and say goodbye, please do so in the chat. Oh, um, hang on, we actually have. Uh, a question that came in through the chat box. Let me just give me a second here. Okay, um, so the question is from Mior. I hope I didn't butcher your name. The question is, I want to ask for a business owner to select which programming language and coding language are most users uh, using nowadays? Uh, HTML5, is it? HTML5, definitely. And so you have to be really strong in your CSS. 
CSS. JavaScript is like a little jQuery and Bootstrap is, Bootstrap is what we are using. Okay, but definitely CSS is very important. The HTML is like the basic structures. Everybody learns from the history. You know, like you look through the book, the history, everything, HTML is definitely the structures. But um, I mean, for designing students, uh, we learn HTML and CSS for the styling, the pages and so on. But for the programming side, I'm not very sure because I'm not going to the back end and so on. Yeah, but definitely CSS has to be really, really important. You have to label everything correctly and you have to know yeah, what everything and is or else you're going to get a headache trying to change something. Um, you are added on to that question and it's asking, how about Python? I'm not sure of that <laughs> because we, we don't go into Python. Um, we, yeah, more to the front end there. Yeah, definitely. Not into the back end so much. Uh, Python is not my language. I used to be a programming student, but no, not. Oh, why the change, if I may ask? Uh, <laughs> there's a little history of me. I'm a graduate of IT, but but, uh, but majoring in uh, multimedia for my de my degree, and then my master's is in arts. So it's a very mixture kind of um, background, but definitely the programming backgrounds and the web web background helps me to build my career into art and design scenes. Yeah. I think if anything, like your whole experience has just made you more well-rounded as a person. And I think that is such a cool thing, you know. Um, but yeah, I think let's uh, wrap things up right now. So again, going back to thank you once again for being here. Michael, I hope to see you in the future. And yeah, fantastic job on your presentation just now. Thank you so much. I'll see you thank soon. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bye. 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 Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to be moving forward with our next award presentation. Once again, this is Site of the Month for the personal category for the month of July to December. I am trying to find out our winners. So let's just go right into it once again. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of July and for this uh, whole category, um, once again, our winners are going to be taking home a prize of 1,500 worth of XBytes credits. So for the month of July, please welcome to the screen whocopyou.com.my by Bite Bear. Hello, hi everyone. Hi. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I, uh, all right, thanks, you. Thanks, Oren. Okay, first of all, um, I really didn't expect to win this award, and I would like to thank Exabike for organizing this event. And also, I would like to thanks to the Bike Bay team, uh, especially for Ariel, for believing in me in this project. And hopefully, uh, and also want to thank you, the client, for giving us this opportunity to believe in us while doing this project. That's all. Thank you, guys. Good work, you guys. Keep it up. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. Congratulations. All right. Welcome. All right. Thank you. So, you're welcome. So moving forward for the month of August, ladies and gentlemen, our winner is joedesigns.com.my by Jotan Designs. Hello, Lauren. Hi. This Hi. is the third one for today. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. For the third time, thank you, Exabyte. Thank you, MWA, for uh, the award. And also thank you to all the judges. It's truly honor to receive this award. So thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. You did a great job also. Thank oh, you. Thank you. It means the world to <laughs> Joe. <laughs> thank you. All right. Sometimes it's comments that this that catch me off guard, but I am truly touched either way. I am doing my best here. But either way, let's get back right into this. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of September, let's welcome to the screen matoglobal.com by Jazz Y. Hi, Jazz. Hi, Lorraine. Congratulations, fantastic work here. Now, I understand uh, you're going to be presenting your speech in Mandarin, so our organizing... Yeah, because I'm not, my English is not really good. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, you sound perfectly fine. But either way, it's that's fine. Why my, that's why my website is also doing the Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, either way, I, our organizing committee will actually be pasting your speech in English for the rest of our viewers here. So whenever you're ready, please take it away. Congratulations. Yeah, sure. Thanks. 
。啊、uh, ，大家好，我是 Model Global 的 Jess Wine， 我是一个 DJ 的 marketer。首先呢，感谢这个主办单位 Malaysia Website Award 还有 Extra Buy Group， 很高兴可以拿到这个奖啦。那我自己也觉得很高兴。然后其实要谢谢 Malaysia Website Award 呢，有给这个 Backlink 自己的网站哦。那个 Backlink 呢，其实有帮助到我的这一个 Domain Rating 有提高了一点点。所以呢，如果没有参加 MWA 的朋友呢，不妨去考虑参加一下，因为可以拿到免费的 backlink 的。然后我觉得呢，其实网站最主要呢有两个功啊、呃，两个作用的，一个就是做 sales， 另外一个就是做 marketing 了。例如在网站里面可以有这个 block section 呢，去 boost 这个 SEO 的 traffic。另外呢，可以在网站里面做这个 lead generation， 然后 collect 这个 potential client 的啊、呃、lead 了 ，email 或这一个电话号码都是可以的。然后在网站里里面最重要的，我觉得是可以设定这个 sales funnel 了，怎样去 fill 的这个陌生人变成一个顾客。然后我像我这样子的小公司啊、小人物呢，要快速去做到这样子的 sales and marketing 呢，其实最适合就是做这个 personal branding 了。所以呢，这个奖呢是肯定了我对这个 personal branding 的这个概念还有这个执行的方式的。That's it for me. All right, thank you, Jess, and congratulations once again on your win. We'll see you soon. Best wishes. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, for the month of October, our winner is FidoDesign.net by Fido. Job, Fido Design dot net, and congratulations for the month of November. We have UmiGoesWhere dot com by Raja Umi Nadra. Bravo! A big shout out to you guys as well. Congratulations, and finally, ladies and gentlemen, the last winner for the second month for the personal. Uh, category we have rollinggrace.com by Grace Ng. Hi Grace, congratulations! Oh Grace, we can't actually hear you now. Let's just have a quick uh, check on your mic. Are you muted? Can you say something? Okay. Uh, let's let's check with our organizing committee. I'm so sorry about the technical issue. We can't seem to hear her. Let's see. Mm. Uh, Grace, if you could be a dear and please check your audio settings. Uh, maybe it's the output of your mic. So that's on the left hand side on the bottom of the screen. Can you hear me now? Yes, absolutely. Great. So, whatever you are, okay. please take it away. So, hi everyone. I hope you guys are doing amazing today. My name is Grace, and I'm the editor of Rolling Grace. First of all, I would like to thank Malaysia Website Awards and Extra Bytes for selecting Rolling Grace as one of the monthly winners. My team and I are so honored to be recognized by such a prestigious organization in the country. Hopefully, with this award, we will be even more motivated to upkeep and improve rolling grapes. So, thank you once again to the organizers for this amazing event. Back to you, Lauren. Thanks, Grace, and job well done. Congratulations once again on your win. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another quick intermission. We have another keynote speaker coming up. This time, we are going to be talking about digital and website trends of 2021. A pretty interesting topic right here, especially because times are changing so much, and I think we really, really do need this. And to uh, talk about this, we have the head of creative innovation of ADA. Please welcome Eileen Carr. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Lauren. Nice to be speaking to you again. Absolutely, long time no see. I remember it was about I don't know, maybe like six months ago, was it, or a year? I I I don't know. I don't know time anymore at this point. Yeah, I think it's about about more than six months ago. <laughs> well, either way, we are excited to have you here with us for the Malaysia Website Awards, the year twenty twenty. You're looking beautiful today, I have to say. Thank you. You too, actually. Oh, thanks. Love your dress. <laughs> Yes, I decided to kind of match the background. I thought it was only fitting. So, but anyway, that aside,、um, let's go back to this. Whenever you're ready, please set up your screen.
All right. Uh, let me select what I need to. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, I can see everything. It's good to go. So, Eileen, whenever you're ready, the screen is yours. All right. Thank you, Laureen. So, um, hi, everyone. My name is Eileen Kaur, Head of Creative Innovation at ADA. So, in my current role, I'm overseeing a full creative stack uh, in ADA as well as um, seeing the whole transformation of how a um, traditional agency would work, you know, um, by digitizing it or by, by putting in technology and uh, data driven solutions to, uh, to our, to the teams as well as to our clients, right? So I'm truly grateful and very honored to be um, invited to be part of this um, Malaysia website awards as one of the judges and to speak uh, today in this virtual ceremony. So um, today I'll be sharing um, five digital and website trends of 2021. So first of all, um, the first trend that I'm, that I would like to say is that personal advice Personalization is going to be key in 2021, you know, especially when it comes to uh, e-commerce platforms. So what is personalization? So personalization is not just about delivering uh, a business outcomes or not to achieve the business outcomes, but what you want your users or your audience to experience when they visit your site, you know, um, the, what, they, what you want them to remember of the brand, and then how do you help them to look for what they want and at the same time, stay relevant to each of their consumer journey. So here are some interesting stats that I have been seeing across the web recently as well um, from very credible sources. So for example, like, you know, 80% of shoppers, they say that they are most likely to buy when a company um, offers a personalized experience and 77% of consumers would choose, um, would recommend and even pay more um, for, to, for a brand who provides personalized uh, services and I'm guilty of this and then 20% um, says that um, when it comes to the brand when they offered a personalization service there's a 20% increase in their sales so then again you ask yourself you know what when your personalization can start with very tricky fundamental questions in terms of where do you where do you uh, start personalizing right so Look into your um, presence on your digital uh, ecosystem, right? You should be having your social channels as well as your website. So look at your social channels and your touch points on your website in terms of where your consumers or your customers are interacting with the most. If you are a brand new um, brand or you know um, that you are new in a market and you're just establishing yourself, you need to drive a lot of traffic to, uh, from your social channels because that's where most of the people are, right? You need to drive them and potentially drive them to your website, the traffic to your website. So develop a uh, social content strategy that, that, that can approach them to introduce your brand, you know, um, according to the, the objectives that you want to achieve, right? Then on your website, build digital touch points that, that, uh, that can then study the behaviors of the consumers and how they interact with your channel, right? Then, in terms of like, um, in terms of developing a strategy, you need to constantly ask yourself, what do you want to achieve? How do you want to position your brand? Um, what are you selling? What are your RTBs? What are your USBs, right? So from there, you, you develop those strategy and then build hypothesis around it to test, to test it out, yeah? So next would be what? What can you personalize? There are many things that you can personalize, right? But like for example, when it comes to websites, like for example, um, you can see a lot of um, e-commerce websites have already have this product recommendations based on browsing histories and also purchasing behaviors. And now um, I would say even interfaces can be even personalized according to the user preference. Like um, what Wai Kong shared earlier, like the, the light mode and the dark mode. Yes, um, it, it, some you, you may have those uh, both of these sessions that would be great because it's personalized according to uh, what the users want to see and according to their own preference, right? Even color themes, font size, and even the text spacing on, on, the, on the page itself. So interfaces can change also um, based on the, also the connectivity um, of the devices that they are locked on. So it can be platform agnostic in terms of, let's say if I were to be seen logging in from a mobile phone and my device is a very low end, of course, you will minimize all those, um, you know, high tech where we should consume a lot of data and also a lot of bandwidth, right? So, and also you have to be personalized with a language and uh, personalization as well. 
So a sample of how a uh, user personalization um, journey when it comes to video, for example, it can start off with how you acquire them. It can start with a, like say, a dynamic video or a dynamic ad that are personalized to their interests or to their to their uh, purchasing behaviors and to what they are searching for, right? That can be in your acquisition. So once you have acquired them and once you onboard them, the personalizations of your creatives can continue into your CRM communications as well. So it can be uh, like an onboarding of them into your service or onboarding them into part of your uh, community, or you can even upsell and cross-sell and even do a customer care via personalization. So there is many, many ways of um, doing a personalization. Maybe I can share with you a sample of a um, personalization video. Sorry. Let me play it. Uh, let me know you can hear it. Hi there. Welcome to Vodafone. We're thrilled to have you aboard. This video helps explain your bill and other important information. We hope you're enjoying your Vodafone plan and all the great things included. With this plan, you'll get data, infinite talk and text, $5 roaming. Now let's look at your billing. Every month, you're billed in advance on this day. As this is your first bill and your service was connected on this day, there are a few days carried over onto this bill. Good news, the service for these extra days is on us, but you may still be charged for any usage during these times that's not included in your plan. Here's what your plan costs, including any extras you've added to your plan, like insurance. And this is the total of your bill this month. Bill payment is due on this day. You can pay through my Vodafone or use one of the other options shown on your bill. If you'd like more information about your bill, head to our site and search for Bill Explainer. We also recommend that you use My Vodafone to easily track your usage, see your plan costs, and access your bills. Thank you for watching. Register for My Vodafone or download the My Vodafone app today. Okay, so now instead of receiving a, a bill statement, now I can, you know, we can personalize it by sending me a video that is according to my uh, to what I've been charged for. So this is a sample video of personalization. So in terms of how, like how do you start with personalization is that uh, you need to gather enough data to understand your consumer's behavior. Where are they and where are they being seen? Then again, like what uh, Fusilan uh, mentioned earlier that um, real-time customer um, support is very important. So you need to adopt tools, um, technologies like um, artificial intelligence or even with machine learning capabilities to help you with real-time assistance and, and in terms of recommendations and also personalizing the whole user-oriented shopping experience when they come into your platform, right? So then when you say that, okay, how do I achieve that? At the same time, like the sample that I showed you earlier, you know, how do I, you know, if I have 300 thousands of consumers uh, on board onto my service, how do I personalize those videos? You know, it's going to be crazy. You're going to kill your creative agencies uh, and I don't think any, and you're going to charge you a bomb. So what you're going to do is that uh, automation will be a very crucial in terms of uh, adopting this personalization for your, uh, for your business. So that leads us to the trend number two, which is creative automation. So creative automation is, um, is a, a, a use of um, technology or a tech platform to help you do repetitive actions to, uh, to produce high volumes of creatives. So it allows you to scale up uh, your creative content or your creative offerings or your creative communications to be adaptable or to be responsive to all the agnostic platforms that you are on and also um, to speed up in terms of you know, your communications when you roll out, uh, like for example, if you have a PR event or you know to address something, and you need to speed up and ensuring that your creatives are speaking to all the audience across all the channels, you can also um, with a creative automation you can do that. And also because it's a lot, and with the use of tech, you are going to make it very affordable as well. So the purpose of creative automation can be also for um, three purposes, which is for performance. Uh, to drive performance, to, perform, um, to drive sales results for your business, and also for you to scale up in terms of your content uh, production as well, and also for the CRM, like the ones that you saw earlier, right? So all in all, um, it's, it's also crucial to also to see when it comes to your performance marketing, right? Like when you do, um, when you do automation, it's not just about the creative, it's also about how it's being served to your consumers as well on your social channel. 
So imagine if I have one, it is no longer the time where you have one ad or one visual that speak to all your audience, right? It can be one US piece as a product and yet you can speak to different um, uh, uh, gender or even of different people of different interests, of different people of different personas. So you can see here in a sample on the screen here is that, for example, Nike, right? Easy to, to sell Nike because it's a sports brand. But you can sell sports brand to so many different people. It can be uh, a male that is uh, interested in basketball and is located in New York City, right? So what you need to do is, of course, you need to show a visual of a male with a basketball, right? And when you talk, for example, on the right hand here and you're speaking to a woman in, in Paris who is a gym goer, of course, you have to then serve them with a creative that is, um, that is, uh, that is in French, right? So all this personalizations and, and can be achieved via uh, automation, whether is it the creative of that being rendered and also when it's being served. So the third trend that I'm looking at is actually um, video content. Video content is going to be, I would say it's increasing. As we can see um, with the whole pandemic, it's everyone sitting at home. Um, the users or the audience behaviors have changed as well. As you can see now on the latest set, um, YouTube itself, they have 2 billion of active users on YouTube and 500 hours of videos are being uploaded to the platform every minute, right? If you calculate this, Right, which is equivalent to 720,000 hours. And if you divide that out, that's equivalent to 82.2 years of new video updated to YouTube every single day. So, and also when you look at the, the video viewing behaviors of across all, uh, across globally as well, um, it, you are looking at 1 billion hours of YouTube views um, per day. And that is even um, higher than, uh, Facebook and Netflix combined, yeah? So then when it comes to consumers' behaviors, again, 90% um, of consumers also claim that uh, they are, their buying decision is also influenced by a video they watch, right? And that when it comes to, in terms of the content performance that we're observing here in the agency is that when we produce a video content, it garners um, 12 times more engagement on all the social channel platforms versus a static visual. So in terms of when, it, when you have more engagement, it means that you have to have more impressions, you're able to reach out to more people, and then you, it will help you to drive higher brand visibility. So then again, um, when it comes to uh, websites, uh, it's also uh, the, in an article shared by Forbes, it is also claimed that you know, when you have a video on your landing page, that can also help increase your conversions by 80%. Yeah. So what you need to do is that, um, first of all, you need to develop a video content marketing strategy. So you need to understand your brand storytelling. Curate content that can help you build emotional connections with your audience, you know, test out your strategy. And like what Sam shared earlier in terms of content, uh, you need to create those buckets, like uh, how do you get the audience to know you better, like your brand, trust your brand, and then in and, and ultimately convert them. So you need to have that strategy and also always, always do A-B testing in your content. And because we're in a digital space, everything moves very fast, right? So it, it allows you, it gives you the opportunity to test things out and to experiment with different things, yeah? And also the second one is to um, making sure that your content is inspirational and informative. So as you can see, um, in 2020, with all the lockdowns that are happening, people are actually um, getting more experimental, right? Like um, they start to do a uh, Dagano coffee, which I, I tried and I failed, right? And I I went and Googled a lot of videos about it, like which it, and ultimately it was just the part where I understand it's because of the beans and of the sugar that I use. So I I don't take sugar uh, with my coffee, so I, so it was never a success for me. <laughs> so then again, it's all those things, right? People are actually looking for inspirational and informative content. So ensure that you have uh, video content that are uh, relative to that, as well as um, uh, that is hygiene enough that people would search for it, right? So, and then um, thirdly is that uh, video content production is always being seen as very expensive, right? People are not doing it a lot because it's expensive. But what I can tell you today is that it can be very affordable, right? All you need to do is to just look in the tools that are available out there. 
analytic tools, content analytic tools, or video analytic tools that can help you to understand what kind of content actually resonates better with your audience, what kind of content actually works for your brand, and then understand a little bit um, the, the use of AI and uh, machine learning um, let, allows those tools to recommend um, some content and the insights that you can leverage on to build those content. Okay, so then again, um, trend number four would be touchless interaction, right? With the whole COVID and with um, and the whole situation again, I think touchless interactions is gonna be key in 2021. So as we all know um, in the UI and UX, um, this has been actually available or it has been there for many years, right? Especially voice interactions. But I think um, what we can see is that instead of just uh, digital transformation, it also has expedited the adoption of touchless inter uh, interaction, especially in uh, your voice interaction, right? Air gestures, air gestures, like, you know, um, back in the, uh, those eras or when, uh, where you have those uh, dancing uh, machines, where you have those air gestures dancing to Para Para Sakura songs, or even um, using the Nintendo Switch where you have the device in your hand and you interact with it, that is also air gestures control, right? So now you can see that how can we adopt this into the tech platform? How do we how do we change the interaction while just by you know moving my hand across the screen or you know instead of me touching the screen, now I can swipe it just with the with a hand gesture. So all in all, um, the immersive experience of bringing it to the audience in. In, through the screens or through the mobile phones, through your tablet, it, 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 needs, it will be enhanced. Like for example, um, AR and uh, AR has been there for many years, right? Augmented reality. I think it was way when um, I was even in uni, you know, that was like 2010, 2007. So, and I've been talking about augmented reality back then. And um, it, 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 it is, it's, it's still the same technology, but the adoption rate has, has increased you know, uh, for the last few years, especially this year as well. And when you can, people are not able to go to the retail store, now you bring that experience to them. So the immersive experience we're going to continue in 2021. Then um, data-driven approaches. So um, data-driven approaches, like you say that um, people are, are very prudent or brands and business like yourself, you have to be very careful in, in every dollar that you spend, right? And because of the pandemic, because of the uncertainties, you know, you know one, are we, are, is the economy opening up or are we doing a lockdown again? All this is very crucial in, in terms of how we react to, um, to people and also to the economy situation, right? So you need to have a data-driven approach. So that allows you to understand a bit more about the what's ongoing and also to understand and, and to tap into uh, the consumer's behaviors that are changing, changing rapidly. So you need to look at tools or, or data from uh, tools like social listening or social analytics to allow you to do a brand and competitive analysis. Then you need to look into your, um, your consumer's behaviors, the demographic, um, their behaviors and the interests of, of what, how they interact with your brands and also, of course, the trends that are ongoing. So when you create the content, it's not just about um, building um, content that, are talk, that, that talks about your product, but you also need to build content that, uh, that are tapping into the cultural nuances, your local nuances, and build brand relevancy to that. You don't need to be hard sell, but you need to be something that is trending. So for example, um, uh, recently I worked with a client and um, it was during lockdown, right? You want to introduce a new product and, and we have and we can't go out there and shoot the production. So what we did was um, we, we write on the trends because it was the uh, was in December when we launched the product. So what we did was um, we understand, we look into what are the sentiments, what are people talking about on the digital space. Then we develop uh, videos content based on the uh, what are client uh, what are people searching for, and that helps you to create visibility. It's not just about uh, you know, um, putting out or increasing your SEO on your website, but now your content can help you to drive that SEO or, the, or make it search relevant um, to your consumers out there as well. Okay, so um, that would sort of uh, summarize the five digital and web trends of 2021. Uh, happy to take any questions. All right, so we have one that came in uh, and this question is, where do you get the latest trends? Where do I get the latest trends? I think it would be um, the, 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 the fifth trend that I've shared earlier, 
right? You need to look in, you have to go online, you know, you need to look into the tools, like um, you have social listening, for example, um, I, 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 with my clients, uh, we have social listening, right? We look into what are people talking about, like what are the conversations are happening, or even you can go into the Google search, right? To look at what are people searching for, the trend, or even you go to YouTube platform, there's the YouTube video trends as well. So basically you can get inspired from, from a lot of uh, tools and tech uh, tools out there. Yeah. All right. So uh, the following question is that because you already are, uh, the question, the next question was how do you justify these trends? And I think you've already answered that already. So let's dismiss that. The next mm. question following that is, uh, do your trends, cons- are, are they only consistent or do they only consist to a regional basis? I believe that's what the person is trying to ask. Okay, I think trends basis? Yeah. to region based, uh, okay, is it based on the locations if the question is trying to ask? I would say uh, trends definitely um, varies um, in, in different markets, right? For example, um, when we are quite trying to roll out certain things like um, MarTech solutions and even some data-driven approaches, in some markets, um, the adoption rate can be, uh, can be slower because of the you know, budget cons- uh, cost constraints and all that. But in some markets, because there's a demand for it, right? For example, um, in Singapore, in Malaysia, in Thailand, and even in Indonesia, because um, the, the consumers are more uh, tech savvy and we, we adopt technology uh, very fast, you know, and we are more, uh, like consumers are, I would say, uh, smarter. Hence, um, the, 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 the trends would be very varied or very different to markets like in um, Cambodia or in Myanmar or in, you know, even in parts of the uh, Vietnam. Absolutely. And of course, I think like a good example would just be Malaysia and Singapore. If you cross one straight, then there's just such a big difference. So thank you for answering that. Um, yeah. We'll take one yeah. more. Now, this one is in the chat, actually. Now, this one comes from Nazim. So mm. the question is, hi, Lee. Very insightful presentation. Thank you. Mm. I wonder if you have okay. any marketing pointers for brands that are exclusively B2B and what we can do better to win tenders. Wow, B2B. Um... I think I think uh, working in an agency is definitely a, um, a definitely a I would say something that uh, I would say a B two B as well, right? So I think um, ensuring that whatever that you offer benefits both parties, right? Um, when we work with friends, uh, when we work with businesses, it's all about uh about helping each other we, we don't see each other as a like a, a, a client or a, 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 or agency kind of a relationship but more of a partnership relationship and see how we can leverage on each other's um, tech and uh, understanding to, to build that uh, uh, success you know so the partnership to be a success one. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we're going to wrap things up right now so we can move forward. But thank you so much. It has always been, you know, so fun to talk to you. Every time you come on screen, I have a good time with you as well. And it's very nice to see you again after all this time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll see you soon. Take care and have a nice good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, you guys. So we're going to be moving forward with uh, the winner announcement for site of the month for the e-commerce category this time. So let's begin, shall we? For the month of January, here we go. Our winner is buttoff.com by Adorable Geeks. Hi, Lauren. Thanks, and uh, thanks, Exabyte, as well as the MWA team, uh, people such as uh, Nicole, Sydney, and uh, many others who has worked so hard in organizing MWA every year. Uh, it's not easy, but what you've done has certainly bring our industry closer together. And uh, we are very happy to receive this award for Bakov. It's a special project for us, and we had lots of fun working closely with Kongsi Design, a highly talented and a creative team. For the brand expression of Barkov is to be bold, authentic, and innovative. So we wanted to build a unique and interactive website that reflects this brand expression. So uh, lastly, we would like to thank our client also, Raymond and Peter. Thank you for your continuous trust and support. And we hope to continue building great ideas for you and continue to grow together. Thank you.
All right. Thank you so much and congratulations once again. Best wishes to you and your company moving forward. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of February, we have Colony.Work by Bitebear. Congratulations. Let's have um, our representative from Bitebear on screen with me right now to say a few words. Hello. Hi. Thank you once again. Hi. I can't see your face, but I can definitely hear you. Oh, you want to see my face? Okay, yes, can, can, can. <laughs> let me on my camera for you guys, okay? All right, thank you to our client Colony, where we collaborated together on this project. Okay, uh, thank you also Exabytes for organizing M MWA year after year. I know it's uh, not easy to do. Um, to all our competitors as well, thank, thank you everybody. I think lastly, what I want to do is to thank all the teachers out there. Uh, internally, we have Ariel who keep pushing us every day. And to people like Wycombe from the One Academy, we have a staff here whose tutelage was under you. So I just want to give a heads up to all those people who have been guiding us. And it's because we know it's a thankless job. Thank you very much. Thanks once again. I love the fact you guys are having a party on your end. That is so entertaining to, to listen to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are celebrating here already. All right. Congratulations once again. Fantastic job. Ladies and gentlemen, moving forward for the month of March. Let's put our virtual hands together and congratulate boxcool.com.my by H Solutions. Hi, hi everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi everyone. Boxcool will take this opportunity to thank Exabyte for the invitation and our greatest honor to be awarded as a one of the winners. 2020 is not an easy year for the world due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, Boxwood has successfully backed through the co convention matter, conventional matter by providing our user easy, quick, and latest technology to make their puzzle delivery seamless. We are partnering with an insurance company, Twin Protect, where our user can insert their puzzle directly by single click via our mobile app with legendary premium. Boxwood's reason is to make shipping simple and everyone can do it as Easy as one, two, three via our mobile apps. Box school shipping make easy. Thank you. Thank you, anyone. Thank you once again. Thank I'm you. sure you're going to go out and do amazing things. Congratulations on this. Thank event. you. Thank you. It was well deserved. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the month of April, we would like to congratulate Ace Cafe, Kuala Lumpur, .my by Bitebear. Hello again. Uh, hi. Oh wow, wow. Just wow. I didn't I didn't expect for a second win for me. And I think this is the let me count. One, two, three, four. It's the fourth win for Bite Best. <laughs> wow. And I would like to thank Ezabite for organizing this event and also the Bite Bay team, the big bears, the baby bears for everyone for working on this project. And I would like to thank everyone. And lastly, you are all breathtaking. Thank, thank you, you once again. All right, congratulations, you guys. Keep that party going on that end. Party for me because I still have to work this event. Not that I'm complaining, though. I love my job. <laughs> Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, for the month of May, we would like to congratulate mellow.com.my by Chuba Creative. Having a little bit of a technical issue, just give us a second. Um, could you try starting your video? Just give us a second, ladies and gentlemen. Slight technical issues. Eric, uh, could you say something at the back? Let me see if I can hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Um, but I can't. I can't seem to start my video though. Mm. What does it say on your screen? Okay, just let me do a bit. Okay, I guess I can't start it, but... Uh, maybe you would like to check your uh, video settings. It's on the left-hand side, the lower left-hand side of your screen. You would see the uh, arrow pointing up where it says stop video. Click on that. Uh, if you could select the camera, see if maybe that's the issue. Okay. 
It's given us a second, ladies and gentlemen. You know, the, the thing about, you know, virtual events is that we have technicalities like this sometimes. Any luck there? No, it doesn't allow me to start. Oh, uh, does it say something like the host is asking, uh, the host, you, you need to ask the host, does it say anything like that? The host asked me to start my video. When I click start my video, it said failed to start video. So, okay, just okay. Uh, unfortunately, um, let's see if we can get you on screen with me. Yeah, or also but no worries. Uh, it's okay, don't have to see me. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. I'm just gonna say um, thank you very much, Exabytes, for the opportunity, uh, not just for me, but for all the uh, web designers and developers out there also for this opportunity to, you know. Uh, flex our skills. Um, personally, this isn't my call. Uh, I'm a doctor by profession, but I'm not a web designer. Am I? And uh, I still remember the day I won the first award in 2016. I wish I attended the event in Penang, uh, where everybody can meet one another. Unfortunately, this time around is all virtual, but uh, I'm still happy to be able to uh, win this award and uh, also Again, once again, thank you very much, uh, Exabytes, that uh, for allowing me to you know flex my muscles on the creative side of things. Uh, so thank you very, thank you very much. Uh. All yeah. right, thanks, Eric. And sorry about apologies. it, Ollie. No, 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 no. I am sorry about the fact that you are not joining your screen right now. But um, so apologies on our end for that. Thank you so much, and congratulations once again. Yeah, thanks, Laurie. All right, anytime. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, moving forward. Finally, for the month of June, we have. TheRituals.com by Idea Batch Venture. Hello. Hi, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, first of all, thank you, uh, Exabyte, for organizing this event. This is our third year here. I feel great to see new faces and old partners here today. So I'm Actually, I have a dream that uh, we work on the same project together and support each other in the near future. So uh, if you guys have the same dream, welcome PM me. I will leave my contact number in the chat box later. So let's make Malaysia website better every year together. Stay safe, guys. See you next year. All right. Super cool and good going there. Congratulations once again. Bye. Now, ladies and gentlemen, just for your information, uh, submissions for MWA for 2021 is actually open right now. So if you'd like to get your website recognized, just head on over to our website. Just, you know, type in MWA and Google. It'll take you there. Now, of course, we're going to be proceeding with our final keynote speaker for today before we wrap things up. We are going to be talking about the anatomy of a performance audit. And to speak more about this, we'd like to welcome to the screen uh, Salia Vitana, the founder and CEO of Mentros Hi guys, how's it going? Hi, it's going great here. We're having a good time so far. Uh, how are you doing? Not too bad. Uh, I saw a few people talking about the pandemic. Uh, I'm having the positive sides of it. I'm stuck in Sri Lanka looking at a beach, so can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> your life right now is pretty much everyone's dream right here so <laughs> that's good to know i hope things are well on your end and it's so great to have you here joining us for the malaysia website awards 2020 cool thank you so much for having me lauren uh let me share my screen absolutely please do yep Okay, so once again, to everyone who is still watching this uh, on Zoom right now, if you have a question uh, for Sadia later on, just head on over to our Q&A button. It's right beneath the screen. Click on that and, of course, type in your question. Make it as detailed as possible. We love questions and ask as many questions as you like. So, um, Sadia, everything looks good. Um, take it away. The screen is yours. Okay, super. Thank you so much. And guys, feel free to ask me anything uh, uh, in between or after or whenever time permits. So like Lauren mentioned, um, so I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the anatomy of a performance audit, uh, but more from a marketer's perspective, um, mainly because I think uh, as marketers, our roles have changed a bit. Uh, we need to understand the technicalities a little bit as well. So I know we are all about the look and feel of stuff, but then there's a massive lot of stuff that happens uh, in between um, and also in the back end. So, I'll try and keep it less technical and more uh, practical. So let's see how it goes. 
So just a bit about myself, uh, not trying to brag, but uh, founder and CEO of a couple of companies, one in Malaysia and one in uh, Colombo. Uh, just got a couple of awards as well. One of the top 50 influential marketing leaders in 2016. I got the Intuit Marketing Award. Really passionate about uh, lecturing and sharing my knowledge, whatever I have. So I do a little bit of part-time lecturing as well. And I'm um, really interested about technology and been in marketing for the last um, 20 plus years. Um, so moving on. Um, so we need to get our house in order. Uh, that's what I tell my clients. That's what I tell my teammates as well. So uh, we need to make sure that Google actually sees you and hears you. I know we all know that Google is the number one search engine and followed by YouTube, which is number two, both owned by Google, interestingly. Um, but um, just to put something in perspective, I think it's always good to look at numbers. So these are the stats from February um, 2021. So Google, um, these are the mobile searches uh, across the world. So we have about 95.03 of the searches coming from Google. Uh, followed by Baidu, Yahoo, Yandex, DuckDuckGo, and Bing. So we talk about other search engines, we talk about ad blocking, we talk about a lot of things, but hands down, Google dominates. So as the line goes, let's cut the crap, you know, let's optimize for Google, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a default. So we really need to look at um, how we optimize our sites for Google and, and also how do you actually assess the, the performance side of things. Um, there are some new things that are coming up. I'm not going to talk about the traditional SEO stuff that we all know, uh, but there are some interesting stuff that's happening in the, in the performance side of things. So one of the key things is called core web vitals. So uh, these are actually known as page experience signals that are actually uh, becoming ranking factors. So Google have just announced that from May this year, these are some of the things that we need to look at as marketers as well as as SEOs. So uh, as you know, most people uh, browse a website through a mobile. Um, so the, the bottom four items that I mentioned here are stuff that we all know. You know. We want to make our site mobile friendly. We want to enable safe browsing, a little bit of security through HTTPS. Uh, we don't want any pop-ups coming up. Uh, I still do see a few on and off, but you know, especially on mobile experiences, if pop-ups pop come up, you know, Google doesn't like it. So we all know that. But on top of this, there are three key things that Google actually want us to look at. Uh, and those are called the core web vitals. Um, starting off with your loading speed. So uh, there is a term called LCP or the largest uh, contentful paint. Um, I'll explain that later on what that means. Um, and also uh, number two is interactivity which is measured by FID or first input delay. And number three is visual stability, um, you know, which is measured through CLS or cumulative layout shifts. Um, so these three factors will come into play in May. And also uh, uh, an interesting factoid is a Google study, I think over a million of pages, uh, page impressions, uh, found that a site that actually meets the recommended thresholds for the core web vital metrics, the users who come to a site like that are 24% less likely to abandon a page before it finishes loading. So we want people to stay longer. We want people to spend more time on a site. So the core web vitals, if you haven't heard of it, search for it today, it's gonna to be important in May. Um, so this is a little bit more of a deep down on that. So the, the key metrics that you need to keep in mind from May, 2021. So these are the three things that I mentioned earlier. So LCP or your largest contentful paint. Uh, so this basically means the time taken for a page's main content to load. So ideally it should be about 2.5 seconds or faster. So you want a page to load within 2.5 seconds. Um, we used to have this metric saying less than three seconds, but now it's been formalized 2.5 seconds. There's uh, the second metric, which is called first input delay. Uh, this is basically the time taken for a page to become interactive. So this should be ideally less than 100 milliseconds. Um, so pretty quick. And then finally, the cumulative layout shift. 
which essentially means you know when you go to a certain websites you click on buy now it takes you back to another page or it takes you back to something else and the page doesn't work properly the layout starts to shift so ideally the score for this should be point 1 so these are the three key things that are coming up in may 2021 which you need to keep in mind the other thing that we uh, need to look at again we might have the most beautiful website in the world but if our content or if our data is not structured uh, you know it's not going to be good because what google sees is what you uh, see on the left of this what we see is what we see on the right of this screen so um, we need to make sure google sees us first and google loves when the data is structured back in the day we used to build websites to um, basically fool google a little bit but google now they've got the rank brain going they've got a lot of signals coming up um, they look at a lot of things and you can't outmaneuver them you have to play the game accordingly so um, you need to really look at how you structure your content so the example i have here i put out a few titles and meta tags and headers and what not from um, a recipe uh, or a cooking recipe you know so for example the title is party coffee cake uh, the type is it's a recipe uh, the name is party coffee cake um, and there's a few uh, people names as well and then your h2 or your header 2 says party coffee cake recipe by mary stone the date is there there's a few more uh descriptions this coffee cake is awesome and perfect for parties preparation time 20 minutes imagine you searching for uh, a recipe for a coffee cake and if i just said coffee cake you know i'm not going to click on it but this schema or this structured data is actually very useful to standardize and provide explicit clues about your content to google so this is how you tell google how to structure stuff or how you structure stuff so that google sees things properly um again um, a bit of a text heavy slide but uh, basically your meta tags um your meta tags are basically what your pages or your website is about and how are you going to tell google to read it and who should see it so i just took the liberty of taking the malaysia web awards uh, website for 2021 i just went through the meta tags uh, so your the, the two key things for me is your meta description and the titles so your description you know currently um, says something like 12th to the 27th uh, december 2021 the objective of mwa is to discover uh, blah 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 developers seo specialist and in in the country kind of thing so what i'm trying to say say here is your meta description has to be contextual it has to be written in proper english uh, you shouldn't uh, stuff any keywords so one part of this site is good because it's a proper english grammar um sentence but the other side is is this how people search for you know if i want to apply for an award i would search for malaysia web awards so you need to have that in your keywords so uh, again in your meta description in your header tags your title tags you need to have the relevant keywords you need you don't need to stuff it but you need to look at the relevance Google operates on one key principle which is relevance and relevance is then broken down into many things it can be your speed it can be the uh, the ui ux side of things it can be how the content is structured so all that boils down to relevance so that's why your meta tag should be relevant to what your users are searching for um this is something that's uh, that we all do on and off um which is voice search Uh, last year or two years ago this was something that was up and coming but now it's a given it's here so if you look at the graph that i have on the left these are some of the voice assistants plus the number of um uh, searches that are happening in billions right so in 2023 uh, we are hoping to get about 8 billion searches purely through voice search so how do you actually optimize a website for voice search I take my phone I speak to Siri or I speak to my Alexa device you know how do I optimize a website for that this is where long tail comes in in SEO uh, there are two key things one is your short keywords one is your long tail people are nowadays smarter especially with um, voice search what happens is people start searching 
for longer terms you know um, not just one to three words but it's actually longer you know it's about how things work what's the closest thing next to me uh, what time does this restaurant open so you need to have uh, certain uh, elements on your website optimized for that the best way is to look at your faqs or your fact sheet where you can ask those questions and provide the answer then and there itself so that you optimize your site for conversational search not just for search so this is something interesting that's coming up so just keep in mind when you develop sites um, especially for fmcg or even um, i don't see this happening may, uh, for b2b much but b2c you'll see a lot of these conversational stuff happening um, and you need to keep that in mind uh next one up is page speed so speed is key i mean this is something that we all look for um you know from a from a cx or even from a ux perspective this is something that we all need to look out for because um it's a direct it has a direct correlation with a user bouncing off right it's a key noise factor so as page load time goes you know one to three if your page loads within one to three seconds your bounce um increases by 32% if your page loads within 1 to 5 seconds that increases by 90% by the way this data is from google uh, if your page loads within 1 to 6 seconds your bounce increases by 106% and if your page load uh, speed is between 1 to uh, 10 seconds so you know the higher end of it the bounce rate increases by 123% so bounce rate uh, is defined as um, a user coming to a site uh, or a page and leaving that page you know this doesn't apply to ppc but it applies to general seo or search so how do you actually um, mitigate this you know there are lots of ways to do it reduce the heaviness of your site increase your uh, server capacity there's a lot of stuff you can do but speed is a key factor so it's actually one of the key factors in a performance audit as well and um, uh, there are you know under speed you look at other things like you know like your average speed index your average time to first buy you know and when you optimize you need to look at your average request count um, then you need to look at the heaviness like like i said the weight of the site so these are some of the key things that google wants us to look at and uh, it's actually very very relevant um so uh, i'll uh, also uh, leave you guys with some tools that you can use uh good news is these are free so uh, one of the first tools that you need to look at is google lighthouse um it's actually starting point of any audit that we do as marketers these days it provides you with a performance scope uh, accessibility best practices seo as well as uh, the overall progressiveness of your web apps um again i took the liberty of taking um, the the mwa site i know the mwa guys are going to hit me now but um i've just uh, done a basic audit using lighthouse while accessibility best practices and seo are quite good uh, performance is not so great so that's something that we need to work on mwa uh, but again this is the level of stuff that you have as a marketer nowadays you know while you are looking at the creative side it's no point if you have the best looking site if the site is not performing or if it's not loading or if it's bouncing or if the traffic is coming in but they are not interacting so the good news about lighthouse is there is a lighthouse scoring calculator and it gives you a score on what needs to be improved so basically it breaks down this score of 12 and tells you where to fix so there are some speed stuff uh, the lcp is not so great um interactive time is not so great total blocking time so these are things that a developer can then fix um ideally when you start building a site you should start thinking about these things but once you build it if you want to do an audit this is a good starting point the second tool that i would go for is uh google page speed insights so uh, this looks at different pages of your website again it's free it's a developer tool but um non developers can also use it you just put the url there and it gives you the paid speed score um and you know according to this it's got a 10 for mobile so you can actually look at mobile as well as desktop 
And the good thing is it tells you what fixes need to be done. So that's what we need, you know, even from a creative or a designer or a developer. This is where you get the whole team together. You tell them, look, guys, my page speed is XYZ. I'm getting a score of 10. I need to improve this. So this is what you do. Um, and this is the number two tool that I would go for uh, when it comes to a performance audit. And uh, finally, the third tool, most of the marketers, uh, especially the digital marketers will know this, uh, but this is actually not related to speed or anything, but it's about the intent of the user. Um, so if you go to your uh, search ads or your ad console, there is a tool called the keyword planner. Here you can actually look for certain keywords people are searching for per country and uh, find out what other things people are searching for. So this is where you identify your current content, what people are searching for and look at the gaps. You know, um, so again, I've taken the liberty of uh, looking for how many um, keywords people are searching, how many words people are searching for. So when you type Malaysia Web Awards for the last 12 months, there's been about 70 monthly searches average for this particular keyword. So essentially, these are people who are looking for this website. Um, there are other searches that are happening, you know, what Google is search, uh, telling us, you know, Philippines Web Awards, Pakistan Web Awards, Jordan Web Awards. You know, you can dig deeper. It also tells me which states. So most of the searches are coming from Selangor, uh, followed by KL, Sarawak, and Johor. So um, this actually, so there is another set that comes underneath this. So apart from the particular word I want to look for, it also tells me what are the other relevant searches people are looking at. So that's where you have a hybrid of what people are searching for and what you have done, and you look at the gaps. It's no point creating something um, if people are not searching for, unless it's a thought leadership piece. You know, in B2B and all, you might usually do, you know, IoT 4.0 or IIoT 4.0, something like that, which is very futuristic thought leadership kind of stuff. That is fine. People might not necessarily know that, you know, it's not an innovation yet. However, if there are certain things that you know your customers are already searching for, and if your content is not written accordingly, then you need to fix that. So the third and the final tool that I would recommend to anybody is the keyword planner. Right, so I've got a couple of uh, quotes to uh, leave uh, with you. So one of the things from Adi Osmani, who is uh, a product guy from Google Chrome, what he says it is if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So data is key for us. I try and see, um, you know, this is basically uh, taken from a tweet that he made recently. This is, uh, he has looked at one of the Google uh, websites itself, Chrome. And uh, what's the first byte? What's the first paint? First contentful paint? So he's looking at all the numbers and um, trying to figure out how to improve things. So again, a really good quote. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And then finally, this guy, you know, he's the god of SEO, Matt Cuts. So your SEO is like your resume. You polish it so that you have the best foot forward. So um, that's about it from me. Um, I think I can stop now. If there are any questions that I can answer, I'd be more than happy to answer. Thanks again, Salia, for your presentation. I love how in-depth it was. Uh, you guys who are tuning in right now, let's give him a virtual round of applause. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations on your uh, very well-presented uh, presentation here. And of course, I like the fact that you actually brought the MWA. So we could never be mad at you. And you know why? Because I think it's initiatives like this that you show us where to plug the holes in our book that is something that money can buy. So thank you for that. We could never be mad at you. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, and I think everybody else in the chat box is also uh, expressing the fact that they love your presentation as well. And um, I think because we're running a little bit short on time and we don't have any questions, uh, how can we get in contact with you just in case any of our attendees here might want to do that? Celia, can you hear me? Celia, can you hear me? Um, um, hello? You guys in the audience can hear me, right? So, oh, I, would you mind repeating that, Laurie? 
Uh, okay, so uh, I asked uh, how can people get in contact with you just in case they have some questions. Oh, um, email is fine. Uh, shall I just type something in here? Uh, Absolutely, you can leave it in uh, the chat box right here. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. No worries. So I'll just put my email down right now and then maybe um, people can just reach out to me. No problem. Absolutely. Of course, it's time to bid you adieu. Thank you so much for being part of the Malaysia Website Awards uh, for the year 2020. It's been a joy to talk to you. Um, I hope you're keeping safe on your end and hopefully we'll see you soon. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks again for the opportunity. Take care, guys. Be safe. Absolutely. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, you guys, so that wraps up our last keynote presentation. And with that, we are going to proceed to announce uh, the site of the month awards for the e-commerce category for the month of July to December. So let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners once again will be taking home a prize of 1,500 ringgit worth of exabytes credits. And for the month of July, we have hopmoonhyung.com.my by Dan. <laughs> Congratulations, if you'd like to join me on screen right now, so you have a short acceptance speech. Hello. Hi. Congratulations once again on your win. Would you like to say something to uh, our members of the audience here? Okay, sure. Uh, hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, thank you to SRPI and also thank you to MWA. Uh, I think there is a little bit of a delay. Yes, I think it's a little bit of delay. Let's give him a couple more seconds to buffer up and see if we can catch him in time. Team developer, Hannah and my boss, Terry and Daniel. Uh, without them, this thing did not get so well. And also, once again, uh, all right, uh, thank you very much. Okay, we actually missed the first bit of your speech because uh, there was a little bit of a lag. So all we heard was Hannah and Daniel and then following that. So maybe you'd just like to say a little bit more from the beginning. In case oh, you oh, 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 so, oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, sure. Uh, for the beginning, uh, I want to say thank you to uh, everyone. Uh, thank you to my team member. Uh, this award is a token for all my team member, uh, in which they are, have the inspiration and the belief they show to me. I want to say thank you to all my team member. Uh, okay, uh, without them, this thing did not get, uh, get so well. And also, once again, thank you very much. All right. All right, thank you. And thank you for submitting your website. We hope to see you okay. more in the future. Congratulations once again. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, for the month of August, we'd like to congratulate Letriononcakes.com by Karuna Sao. <laughs> Hi, Laureen. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks once again for the award. Um, I would like to attribute this award to our employees as well as our staff who have created this website. All right. Fantabulous. Congratulations once again. And um, it's a well-deserved win. Look at that. Beautiful Thank website. You. Congratulations, you. Melvin. We'll see you. Bye. Bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the month of September, our winner is m2020.my by Fido. Congratulations to FidoDesign.net for their win, a job well done as well. Moving forward for the month of October, our winner is beautydeluxo.com by Magnus Digital, Cindy Hi Reynolds. Hi. Hi. Uh, this is our second award for 2020. Uh, thank you uh, to the uh, expert juries and MWA. It is an honor to receive this award. Thank you again to my team at Magnus Digital for their hard work on this website. This site was challenging. I'm sure you will agree. Uh, many thanks to our client Beauty Delanzo for trusting us to build the website beautydelanzo.com. Uh, beauty we had great fun working on it and we are glad that you are happy with the outcome. Thank you again to my wife and family for their support. Thank you for the award. See you next year. All right. See you, Reynolds. Good work there. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, for the month of November, our winner is earthandnature.com by Adstruck Asia. Hello. Congratulations. 
congratulations. Yeah, hi. On behalf of Astrax Asia, we are happy to receive the award for the side of the month. And Earth and Nature is an e-commerce platform that sells only organic and natural skincare products. So the idea of the website is to let our customers to have a seamless experience when buying through digital way and at the same time enhancing website performance. Once again, thank you for Malaysia Website Award, Exabytes and our valued supporters for giving us this opportunity to serve you better. Thank you. Congratulations once again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, finally for the month of December, our winner is thechicinitiative.com by Xiao Huiling. Congratulations to thechicinitiative.com for bagging the uh, Science of the Month Award for the month of December. A fantastic job right there. Right now, we're going to be moving on with the winner announcement for the favorite website awards for the commercial, personal, and e-commerce categories as voted by you. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners for this category will be taking home a prize of 1,500 ringgit worth of Xbytes credits. For our commercial category, our winner is WTech.software by WTech Marketing to Darren Berhan. Hi! Hi, Laurie. Congratulations! Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Ting Tian from WTech Marketing. I'm honored to be given the opportunity to deliver my speech on behalf of WTech Marketing today. First of all, thanks to the organizer for providing such a platform that allows us to showcase our work. Being awarded by MWA is indeed a huge recognition for us. The reason we joined this competition is to raise our awareness among the public about our company, which specializes in IT solution. Being awarded with this award has proven our ability and therefore we hope to fully utilize our ability that we have to help more people in need. Besides, WTEC would like to thank everyone who has involved in this, especially my team members and those who have been supporting us throughout this journey. Thank you very much. And thank you for being a part of the Malaysia Website Awards 2020. Congratulations once again. We'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to be announcing the winner for the personal category. And our winner is Dr. Selvan VP.com by TS Dr. Mativanan Jalanathan. Hi, Lori. Hello, congratulations. Ah, thank you. Um, congratulations to all uh, award recipients. Do you see my video? Yes, I can see your video. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, congratulations to all award recipients. And it's my great pleasure to be a part of Malaysian Website Award. And also a, a winner. The funny part is I have submitted two websites. My own website lost, okay? Unable to be a winner. And my friend's website become a winner. <laughs> okay. And also uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my you know, uh, parents, my students as well, okay? And also uh, my faculty members to be a very supportive. And I think I'm a bit stranger compared to all the winners because I am a lecturer and not from industry. Okay, I'm a freelance and website is not my, you know, my degree or I have only any degree about this one, just my hobby. Okay. And uh, okay, as an academician, Okay, and also director for the Career Development Center, University of Uttara Malaysia. Okay, I think uh, this platform, especially the MWA uh, award function can be a good platform to build our network and also share our thoughts. Okay, I have seen a wonderful uh, sharing from the industry, industry people. It's very grateful. I, have, I will take this recorded uh, videos of course, I will share with my students. Okay? Okay, thank you, Lauren. Wonderful thank event. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you so much for being here. Congratulations once again. Okay. All right, bye. Have a great day. Okay. 
Finally, ladies and gentlemen, our favorite website award for the e-commerce category goes to lpropharmacy.com by Elpro Pharmacy, Sandira Berhad. Hi, hi, thank you. Thank you, MC, for announcing us. Just want to check, is my sound and video working? Yes, it is. I can hear you okay. out here. So I'm Joanne representing for Alpha Pharmacy. First of all, I would like to thank Exabikes and all the honor- organizing team for organizing this event and honoring us this award. So this actually means a lot to us and it reassures that yes, we are doing something right to achieve our goal. Because as receiving something website related award is not common in the medical industry. And uh, our company visions is to create a healthy and vibrant world as we pro- promise to provide professional service and help to anyone striving for a better life. So ultimately, we know that we are serving the people. Keeping up to the changes of consumer behavior and improving the whole customer journey is something that is always in our mind. So right now, we are on the way of the journey of digital transformation. Other than website revamping, we are also working towards to create a seamless customer journey of O to O, online to offline, offline to online. So this this means that the customer will feel there's no difference whether they are shopping at the e-commerce store or visiting the outlet. So once again, thank you so much for having us. And we believe that by using technology in the right way, it could really make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you so much. A phenomenal speech right there. And congratulations once again on your win. All right. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the pinnacle of our event. This is it. We are going to be announcing the Site of the Year Awards for the Commercial, Personal and E-Commerce category. Now, of course, if you are in the chat box right now, let me know who you think is going to win. We're going to start things off with our commercial category. Just type in your name. It's okay. I know you're going to vote for yourselves anyway. <laughs> it's totally normal. But in case you want to vote for a friend, you know, let us know. Let me think. Uh, let me know who you think is going to win the uh, Site of the Year for our commercial category in the chat box right now so interesting so go ahead and leave your uh, opinions there and let's have a look at all our nominees for the uh, site of the year uh, commercial category is going to be taking home a prize of 3,000 ringgit worth of Exabytes credits. If that's not exciting, I don't know what it is. So here we go. Fingers crossed. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner for the site of the year for our commercial category is arcstudio.com.my by Jotan Design. Thank you. Wow. Of the year. <laughs> <laughs> this is a surprise. I-, I didn't prepare for this one, but thank you. Thank you, all the judges, except by also NWA. Thank you for the support and thank you for the recognition. So, 
I think I guess that's all for now. Absolutely. You know what to say, actually. <laughs> I think it's for this one. I just, yeah. I'm just very happy to join this contest, and I never thought uh, I would able to win this. And thank you, my client, to give me just the chances to design their website. I think that's all for now. I think it's the fact that you didn't know right. that makes it all the more sweet. And congratulations once again. You're taking home three thousand uh, three thousand ringgit worth of X Whites credits. Congratulations once again. Thank Good you. job, fantastic. Keep it up. We'll see you next year. Bye. Bye. Okay, so that was one category down. Up next, we have our personal category. So we have a whole bunch of nominees as well. Let's play our video. Remember, this person is going to be taking home a prize worth 3,000 ringgit with the X Bytes credits. Here we go. Let's have a look at our nominees. So shocked. Grace, are you there with us? Oh, there's a little bit of a lag. Congratulations once again. Okay, there you go. You're up to speed with us. Go ahead. Right, thank you. Um, I feel shocked, but thank you so much for this recognition. It means a lot to me. Um, I guess I will keep following the website now for more tips on how I can improve my site as well because it's obviously not the best. So yeah, can't wait to learn more from all of you. Thank you. You're welcome, Grace, and congratulations once again. You have a great day now. You too. All right, bye. Oh, this is so exciting, you guys. Okay, so finally, we have one last category. That is the e-commerce category, you guys. Just spam the chat right now. Who do you think is going to win this one? Let us know. Let's take a look at our nominees for the start of the year for our e-commerce category.
ladies and gentlemen, the winner for the site of the year for the e-commerce category and taking home a prize worth 3,000 ringgit with of XYX credit is colony.work by Bike Bear. Congratulations, you guys. <laughs>